Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the live banquet. I hope you guys are excited as much as we are. Um, I do want to mention we won't start till seven. So uh, just, you know, for the time being, make sure that you guys share this link, rejoicebanquet.com with your family, your friends on your social media. That way um, people don't miss out on what's happening today. And uh, you get to hear some of our guest speakers. Um, I do want to introduce to you right now um, our presidents of Students for Life at uh, UTEP and NMS. You so uh, just to hear a little bit of what they have to say and uh, what they're doing um, here in the borderland city um, to see uh, abortion end. So here we have Marcos and Andrea. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm the president of Students for Life at NMSU, and Andrea is this president of Students for Life at UTEP. Yes. Um, so can you just kind of d tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing at your campuses? How can people get more information and a little bit on, uh, you know, um, just how do students get involved? What is it that you guys do at the campuses and even outside campuses as well? Um, well, we uh, advocate um, for the unborn on campus, basically providing uh, students with the resources, supporting them, educating them that life begins inside the womb and um, basically just informing them on, um, you know, the different things that abortion can bring. Um, we also do uh, from policy, public policy, to supportive services, to um, standing outside the abortion clinics, things like that. So all of those things combined have a really good impact. And I think that when we start to implement those things, it can have a substantial change. In the Thank you so much. Yes, so our goal is to protect the students' right to raise a family by promoting a culture of life in the campus, um, in our campus community. And like Marcus said, we do this by educating others on abortion and um, also volunteering with organizations that share our same values um, and connecting students with resources that provide real solutions to the problems that abortion tries to hide and ignore. And we just want to empower parents, especially women, um, to tell them that they are strong enough, that they don't need abortion, and that they can be successful and be a mother at the same time. Thank you guys so much. And I'm assuming you guys have an Instagram page and a Facebook page as well? Yes. Yeah, okay. So you guys can go ahead and follow them and Students for Life uh, to kind of get um, more information and certain events that they do throughout the year as well. And like you said, they do partner some, uh, with us as, as well for the 4 Days for Life campaign. So uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys coming out here and talking to us and just kind of sharing a little bit about what you guys are doing. Alrighty. Thank you. And, um, up next, we are going to have one of our interns uh, speak a little bit and share. Uh, those of you who do know her, you guys have seen some of the videos that Mark has posted on our Facebook page and our um, YouTube channel as well. So be sure to follow us on there um, on subscribe and follow us on Facebook and YouTube as well. So I'll go ahead and have Hustini. She's going to be coming um, and just sharing a little bit about the things that she uh, has encountered and the stuff that has been going on out in the sidewalk. So Hustini. You ready, girl? We're a little bit nervous, but it'll be fine. <laughs> Alrighty, so just share with us a little bit about your thoughts, what, the, what they were uh, while you were out there. You know, you encountered some difficult things with uh, one of the abortion workers and then as well as uh, the security guards. So tell us a little bit about, about that. Well, my thoughts, they were all over the place. I was confused. I was scared, especially with the security guy. I was always polite, friendly, you know, like good morning, how are you? And he's the one who took it the wrong way. I never give him the, the door to like, to, for him to have a thing with me, you know? And I was scared to find that in my car. And especially now he knows where I work. He knows the car that I drive. And, you know, it's a little bit scary. And with the abortion worker, it was something I was not expecting. Um, she was taking her anger at me, which is understandable with all the things that she's been through, especially how she lost both of her parents at the same week. and. And a lot of people have been asking me, how are you doing it? How did you do it? Why were you so patient, so calm? And my answer is God. He, he was the one who was in control. And he was the one who was doing the talking, not me. Well, thank you so much for sharing a little bit of that. I know it's you guys are on the front lines out there. You know, it's difficult. You guys see all this stuff. You know, so I do just want to encourage you guys watching virtually to continue praying for our interns. You know, they are in the front lines. They do deal with a lot of things emotionally, spiritually as well. So just, uh, you know, be sure to keep them in your prayers. And uh, and we just thank you for your guys' support. 
Thank you so Thank much, you. Christine. Alrighty, and just a quick reminder, please share the link, rejoicebanquet.com. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, start a watch party, that way you guys don't miss out. We will start at seven. Um, and then as well, we are getting ready for our next 40 Days for Life campaign, which we are already excited. I know it seems um, like far away, but it is uh, coming soon. So um, it'll be February 17, which is Ash Wednesday, and it'll end on March 28th, which is Palm Sunday. So just uh, kind of be aware of those dates uh, as it is approaching. Um, and I will be calling you and uh, we will be in contact so that we guys can uh, already volunteer, set a day that you guys would love to go and pray. And as well as um, uh, just, you know, being aware of this, the things that are happening um, and as the dates approach. So uh, for now, we will go. We're going to be walking around. We do want to get a special guest to you, uh, Jamie, and she's going to be, bring, be bringing somebody as well from 40 Days for Life. So we're excited. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Jamie Jeffries, and I am the executive director for Abortion on Trial. I'm so excited to be here with you all tonight with the Southwest Coalition for Life. And I am super, super excited to introduce one of our very important guest speakers tonight, Mr. David B. Wright from 40 Days for Life. Hi. Ooh, it's so exciting to be here. I'm I've been super looking excited. forward to this for so long. Me so. too. Glad and to everybody here. watching at home and to those watching in the room next door, greetings. We are so glad you're with us tonight. So it's exciting to be here. Awesome. So what are you most excited about for this event tonight? Okay. Wait, who's interviewing you? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So, okay. Honestly, so Jamie will ask the questions and I'll try to answer. I'll be honest. I was most excited to actually hear your talk. But after spending the day in a strategy session with you, I'm even more excited to hear what Mr. Mark Cavalier from Southwest Coalition for Life has to say. They are doing some incredible things down here. Um, what are you excited about? You know, I love the Southwest Coalition for Life. I saw Mark start this organization when he was getting started in Las Cruces, New Mexico, watching it expand regionally here to the El Paso borderland area and watching the impact that it's had. So I've gotten a little sneak preview of what Mark's gonna be sharing tonight in the report. You will not want to miss one minute of the program tonight. I am telling you, you're gonna be blown away. And in the midst of a time where right now in our culture, a lot of people have despair and they're frustrated, whether it's election outcomes or pandemic lockdown or cultural tensions, but there is hope right here. And we're gonna to get to hear about that hope tonight. And you're gonna to get to hear about that hope. You're gonna hear how your prayers, your efforts, your dollars are saving lives, are changing hearts and minds, and are closing down abortion facilities. Literally what's happening in El Paso is shaping the entire abortion debate for all of America. And you get to be a part of that. So watch what Jamie was saying about Mark's presentation tonight. It's gonna to be amazing. And I got a little sneak preview. Sister Dee Dee Byrne, our keynote speaker tonight, she is on fire. If you saw during the political convention where she spoke, she knocked it out of the park, delivering a pro-life message to millions of people. And tonight you get her from home, You, we get her right here in this room, and she is on fire. We had dinner with her last night, and she is so fired up. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. And also, there's a surprise that's gonna happen sometime during the event tonight that hardly anybody knows about. I'm one of, I think, three people that know about it you won't want to miss it. So I'm not going to tell you anymore. You've just got to stay with us throughout the whole program to find out David, what it is. You I don't, don't like know. secrets. I don't even know what this is. I'm excited now. That's well, awesome. Curiosity, you know? Curiosity. Keeps it exciting. Thank you so much for your time. I'm you so bet. excited to hear what you have to say tonight and all your inspiration today was incredible. So everybody, if you are not following 40 Days for Life online, make sure that you're doing that and get involved with your local 40 Days for Life groups man's got some good stuff going on and keep getting more involved in the southwest coalition for life you're changing history you're making an incredible life-saving difference and i can't wait to tell you more during the program here tonight so god bless you and thanks for being a part of the live stream awesome thank you so you much betcha. david really appreciate it this is so exciting that guy is so smart <laughs> so I am really excited to hear what you guys have to say about tonight. I know a lot of people who wanted to join us in person couldn't, so we want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing in pro-life work? Do you have questions for us? Let us know. Drop your questions in the comments. We will be checking it throughout the night, and I will be jumping back on, and I can answer those questions. And um, if you see somebody behind me that you're like, I know that person, go talk to them. Drop it in the comments, we'll see what we can do. We really wanna involve you as much as we can, um, even though we are very far apart. So I am going to um, bring Rebecca back on for just a second and find out who our next guests are. Thank you so much, Jamie, I appreciate it. 
Alrighty guys, so we, on this year we also got a lot of uh, new members that got to join our uh, Southwest Coalition for Life team uh, because we did get, uh, you know, the Stork Bus. So it's been very exciting to see that uh, take place. So I'm just going to go ahead and introduce to you guys Julie and Benita. They're going to share a little bit about what they're doing uh, at Southwest Coalition. Thanks, Rebecca. My name is Julie Winkler and I am the Medical Mobile Unit Operations Manager and this is Vanita and she is our nurse manager and we are very excited to be part of the team. Um, I'm coming from Albuquerque, New Mexico where I managed the mobile unit there that went to the late term abortion facility and I moved down south and have an opportunity to continue that work here and I'm really excited to start this ministry and help it get off the ground and I'll let Vanita share her story. All right. Thank you. So I'm Vanita Vasquez. I am the nurse manager of the mobile unit. Um, so I just work in conjunction with uh, Julie on the day-to-day -day operations, making sure that uh, everything is in policy and procedure is in place, uh, that audits are, are taken care of and that the basically that the medical por portion of the process is followed uh, in in a consistent manner so I became involved with a coalition through my church uh, they have an Anglicans for Life chapter and so through the email I saw that they were looking for a nurse and so I thought this was just the perfect opportunity so to work for the kingdom so I'm very excited to work for the coalition work with these wonderful people and uh, get this mobile unit started thank you much. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. Appreciate it. So I um, just want to uh, encourage you guys as well. You guys can be uh, a part of helping um, us here at Southwest Coalition by volunteering. Um, I do also want to mention um, as Four Days for Life is approaching, we will need a lot of help uh, to, you know, get people out there on the sidewalk praying. So um, I know you guys uh, know our office number. Um, it is an 800 number, so it's 833-388-LIFE. So if you guys ever get a call from uh, an 800 number, I do want to, like, kind of mention that I know it looks sometimes it can be a scam. Most numbers call through that. But I do want to let you guys know that uh, just kind of be aware that we will be calling uh, some of you guys to ask you guys to volunteer. But if you are interested, in volunteering and we don't get a chance to reach you or by chance we miss you or maybe it's your first time if you guys could please give a call uh, to the office we are um available monday through friday from nine to four i uh, do want to uh, give you guys back the give the mic back to jamie she's going to be introducing to us a couple more people that i think you guys will be uh, privileged to hear from and that are also helping to see abortion end thank you so much I am super excited to be talking to this next gentleman and you guys uh, listen up, listen to what he has to say and it's going to be really awesome. Uh, please welcome Congressman Steve Pierce. Hi, Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. So glad you're here. Would you tell our viewers a little bit about why you wanted to join tonight and what brings you here? Well, just passionate about the life issue. I served in Washington for 14 years and watching the, the steady creep of Planned Parenthood into the funding, uh, we would try to block it many different ways. Uh, they could find different ways to get the back door open. And we must be fighting these battles on the front lines here where the clinics are. Uh, I, I tell people that if it weren't for evangelical Christian kids, uh, that the clinics would be closing, but it is us, it is us evangelicals who are using abortion clinics and keeping them open. Uh, something like 70% of our, of our young girls that get pregnant go through the abortion process. And so we're just always talking to people saying, please be aware of what, what's going on. But it has to be in the streets as well as in Washington. Too often we want those people up there to do it. We have to be saying things uh, loudly and, and affirmatively here in the local areas. I agree. Is there anything going on locally right now in New Mexico that you think people should be keeping their eye on or anything coming up that you think that they can get involved in helping you with? Yeah, absolutely. Most people do not know in New Mexico that we are the late-term abortion capital of the country. They, uh, the, the entire nation got upset in January of 2019. So last year in January when, when New York and, and Virginia started talking about uh, abortion on demand, the day of the birth, no parental consent, 
and the, the nation got really uh, alarmed all of a sudden. And, and I'd watched the live fish issue be about 60-30 for most of my career and it suddenly was 50-50. That's how much that people reacted. And in New Mexico, they're especially incensed. I said, why are you incensed? We are doing that now here. It is in law and we're doing it. And be incensed about us, not New York and not Virginia. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you being here and for speaking out on this issue. Thank you so much for Thank everything you that much. you do for life. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Absolutely. Have a good night. I am going to find one more gentleman to talk about some stuff with you guys. Um, Congressman Pierce was just talking about something that's really, really true and not known a lot of the times is that there is abortion up until birth legal for any reason here in the Southwest. And that is something that we are fighting against. Somebody who is taking a really active role in that is Mike Seibel from Abortion on Trial. Um, he is an, oh, right here. <laughs> he is an amazing attorney <laughs> with a brilliant mind when it comes to pro-life issues. And I just wanted you guys to meet him and hear a little bit about what he has to say regarding late-term abortion being so present here in the Southwest. Hi, Mike. Hey, Jamie. Beautiful night. Lots of people here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. So tell us what's going on down here. What do you guys need? What's happening? Well, what's going on with abortion on trial or what's going on here, just down here at Southwest Coalition for Life or joint efforts? What would you like to know? All of the above. <laughs> so Southwest Coalition for Life and Abortion on Trial have been working with, on the um, closing of the clinic of, uh, late, uh, not late term, but abortionist France Theard, um, who has been the subject of probably five or ten different um, legal and administrative actions over the last two and a half months. And, you know, there's, there's exciting stuff to comment tonight about what's going on with that. Stay tuned tonight. It's going to be a great time. You'll learn about abortion on trial. You'll learn about Southwest Coalition for Life. You'll learn about the unity that we are bringing to this community that has never, ever been seen before in the state of New Mexico, and maybe not even nationally. So I think it's a great night here. I mean, the energy is just incredible out here tonight. So it I think... Really is. Yeah, it's exciting. What I feel bad that people at home can't feel what we're feeling being here because it is really awesome and a really cool vibe. Uh, what is something that people at home can do to feel involved, to feel like they're a part of what's going on if they can't be here in person? How can we get them in on this with us? What can they do? I mean, what they can do is enjoy themselves tonight. I mean, this is going to be a b pretty big show. I think this is going to be the start of a historic event. And, and when you when you see what's about to happen here uh, with Southwest Coalition for Life and with the New Mexico leaders, we, we have tons of them here all through the Southwest. I mean, you, you, you're going to see something special, a start of a new movement that we have never seen before here in New Mexico. Awesome. I'm excited. Thank you for you being here. Be excited. Talk to you later. So, like Mike said, there's a lot to come out tonight. A lot of announcements are going to be made. A lot of really awesome news that we get to share with you guys. Like David said earlier, some things that even I don't know. So I am really excited to hear what's going on. Um, I know Mike said just sit back and enjoy yourself, and I agree with that. But don't forget to drop some questions in the comments if you'd like to. And I'm going to check on those um, when the program starts and then a little ways in while everyone's having dinner, um, I can try and answer some of those questions for you guys. So make sure you be involved that way as well. And it looks like we have our friend back. Hi. Who do we have coming okay. now? So we have Sister Deidre. She's gonna be sharing a little bit, uh, just a couple words and you guys get to hear her personally, those watching online. Um, we are super excited to have her here. Uh, she came in yesterday, so she's just been a blessing to everyone around her and uh, she has a lot to, to share. So I hope you guys uh, get to enjoy what she has to say. Yeah. Hi, do you wanna? Yeah, just share okay. anything, yeah. It, and hi, my name is Sister Didi. What what is this for now? It's Who's this? watching virtually. Okay. Yeah, okay. A, well, thank you for having me uh, tonight. And I'm from Washington D.C., Banana Republic of the United States of America. <laughs> and I look forward to sharing a little bit of God's love here in El Paso. Yeah. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Sister Didi. It's so awesome to have her here, yes. and she's so humble and just. Such a, she has a sweet presence to her. So we are very, very excited to have her. Uh, and it's just a blessing. So thank you so much, Sister Dia. We appreciate it a lot. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, you too. Alrighty, guys. So um, I think we still have a couple more minutes until it's 7. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of people um, coming. So it's very exciting. Uh, we were not expecting 
as many people to come, you know, due to just the many things that we've had this year. But we are very excited to have um, people show up and as well as uh, have you guys uh, be a part of uh, 40 Days, I mean, a, a part of the banquet um, there at your home. So. Um, again, please do share RejoiceBanquet.com. I don't want to uh, be repeating myself, but I do want to, for those of you that are just getting on uh, live stream, I also want to mention, please follow us on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, Southwest Coalition for Life. Um, Mark does give a lot of updates of what's going on, especially throughout the campaign. You know, if things uh, change last minute, you will get notifications um, if you subscribe and you follow us. Uh, we thank you guys so much um, for just your support and I hope that you guys enjoy uh, this event and are excited um, as it's almost close to getting started. So um, we were going to um, have a few uh, comments um, that we wanted to answer. So keep um, uh, sending your comments that way we can answer you in a couple more minutes and then sort of um, get uh, replies and answers to the things that you guys have and uh, respond to some of, the, some of you guys that are just as excited as we are. Um, another thing, I did forget to uh, introduce myself just a little bit. I am also new of the, on the team at Southwest Coalition for Life. Um, I am Rebecca Vasquez. I am the Community Engagement Manager. So I will be um, in charge of um, many of the events that we will be having at Southwest, including the campaign for Days for Life and uh, just making it run smoother. Um, um, you guys will be hearing a lot from me uh, getting, um, getting called as well and uh, just you know be asking you guys for a few, um, favors and just sort of uh, helping you guys be involved with uh, part of Southwest Coalition team to see abortion end and so um, we're gonna I'm gonna hand it off to Jamie I think she has a couple more things that she wants to share with you guys uh, before we start at 7 okay thank you so much awesome. thank you okay I wanted to just bring on just a couple more people with you guys really quick um, if you would, in the comments, give me likes and hearts and all that jazz for my friend Ethel Maharg from New Mexico, Right to Life. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Good. Jamie? Yeah. You know everybody here? I do. I yes? do. Okay. If not, I'll get to know them all. Okay. Well, yes. that's good. It's yes. our first time meeting. I'm really excited yes. about that. So what are you guys doing? What does Right to Life have going on? What can we hear about? Well, we just got through the election. We worked hard to, to try to help uh, pro-life candidates get elected. We had we had 101 that brand new ones that, that ran, and they were pro-life. They were out there speaking. Unfortunately, it didn't go how we had thought, but we worked hard, and there's some of them here, and so we're real excited. I'm telling them still that they still won, as far as I'm concerned, because they were out there really publicly speaking yeah. about life and and family and you know faith and everything. So I I think we won. I, I still think we won in in some regards, you know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah sure, I that's good. awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. What do you think that people at home that are online, what can they do to be involved with what New Mexico Right to Life has going on in the upcoming year? Well, they, they need to get involved because what we need, we're going to be heading to the legislature really soon. And so they need to tune in. They need to reach out to us and contact us. Let us be, let come and be in on, on our email list because we communicate through those emails. We let them know what's going on at the legislative sessions. We sometimes moment by moment, day by day, let them know what, what's happening with the pro-life bills. And they're going to bring them back. We know that we fought two of them a couple years ago, HB 51 and HB 90, and they were both defeated. And we know because they are now majority or still, they you know, we're just praying, really, because we shouldn't have won then, and we shouldn't win now, but, you know, we have a great God, so they need to just tune in, make sure that they're connected, uh, tell everybody, and then just be part of the process. They just need to, you know, when we say make phone calls, make phone calls, and we say um, write, write, or whatever it is mm -hmm. that we're needing for them to do. Yeah. So just, just stay engaged, listen, just pay attention, so we'll, yeah. be, we'll be keeping everybody informed. Awesome. Well, we will be listening and paying attention and doing all we can to help you. All right, thank great. you. Thanks Appreciate so it. much. Thank Thank you. Hey, Vince. I think we're going to uh, talk to just one more person here this evening. Vince Torres? Yes, Torres. yes. Torres, okay. Didn't, I got it right. So you were at the session today too, right? I was, yes. What did you think? How was hearing about all the strategy, everything going on down here? What do you think? Just encouraging. I yeah. think to have that many pro-life leaders in one room talking not about just the individual things that we want to accomplish, but how we can leverage our resources collectively to come together and do something much bigger. It was very encouraging and uh, something I think we will look back on perhaps even months and years from now and say that was the beginning of something very
very special. Yeah, I agree. It was really cool. Will you tell our viewers a little bit about uh, what the work is that you do and how they can follow that and be involved in what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm blessed to serve as the Executive Director for Family Policy Alliance of New Mexico. We are a public policy partner of Focus on the Family and we focus our lobbying efforts really in three areas, uh, religious freedom, family values, and the life issues. So you can get more information on our website at familypolicyalliance.com. Perfect, awesome, thank you so much, Vince. Thank you. Absolutely, have a good night. So many amazing pro-life people here tonight, you guys, from all over, and I know that it's the Southwest Coalition for Life, but we do have people um, from, from all over the Southwest, and it's really great to see that, that unity coming together. Um, I wanted to remind you guys again, just one more time, if you have questions for anybody that you saw on camera tonight, uh, whether it be David B. Wright or Vince Torres, who you just saw, Mike from Abortion on Trial, drop them in the comments, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching, and we will go back into those threads and, and get you any kind of information that you guys might want to have. So it looks like we have time for one more friend, and this is really exciting because he's really, really awesome gentlemen. So I am going to invite over our friend uh, Joy Poyman from Texas Alliance for Life. Hi, come on over. Hello. How are you? Great. Great. So tell us about everything going on today. What is what's well, going on I, here? And you were with us today too, right? Yes, I was. So what did you think? We, we're all well, so excited about it. This is going to be a great evening. It's already setting out to be a great evening. I believe in this organization. Uh, my name is Dr. Joe Poyman. I'm Executive Director of Texas Alliance for Life. And I came here from Austin just to be here with you all tonight. This is a great organization and you are accomplishing so many wonderful things. I mean, it's, it's so impressive. And we, I, I want to help celebrate. I'm always looking for a good celebration. And when an abortion facility closes, like Hilltop here in El Paso, I mean, it's super big reason to celebrate. And What's, what's great about that is the abortion facility closed, but you have so many wonderful alternatives to abortion, including the new bus. I mean, you have alternatives to abortion so women don't have to seek abortion. They never do, but they, they especially know it when you have so many wonderful organizations that want to help them. So this is very exciting. Um, we are, are just, um, Texas Lines for Life, we want to help in any way we can such an honor to come here and be here with so many wonderful people as they as they show up and you know this is covid huge challenges and your organization is up to the challenge you're accomplishing great things even amidst it so i commend you i'm super thrilled to be here i'm looking for, forward to a great night absolutely thank you so much We're great so oh by the way great idea getting sister Dee, Dee here yes. i'm i like everybody else i'm super excited to hear what she's going to have to say yes she's amazing it will be very exciting yes so, well thank you for the great. invitation to talk absolutely i appreciate okay. you joe thanks like joe said there's so many amazing pro-lifers in the room and we can totally tell i have my friend rebecca coming back over and we'll see what's going on here how are we doing good so we just we're about getting ready to start up uh, uh, the banquet so we're excited for that uh we're just uh, more people are coming in, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes and plays out. I hope you guys are blessed there at your home. Uh, we do have Mark here, so yes, hey. this is it. It's Hi. finally happening. Everybody, so, Mark Cavalier. thank Welcome. you, thank you. I'm sorry I've been bothering everybody with emails for nonstop, and uh, there's just been so much happening. But it's here. This is amazing. This is a testament to God. Um, just so many people coming out for this issue of life, knowing how important it is, um, and I'm just so inspired. Uh, normally we have. Uh, you know, like three times as many. So, uh, you know, we had to be very careful and follow the guidelines. But uh, just to see the response still has just been so amazing. And uh, and I thank you for joining from home. Uh, I know it's been really hard, so it really means a lot. Um, we had some technical difficulties earlier, and I know it's a little bit choppy and things like that. But thank you for bearing with us. And um, if you miss anything, or if it's, um, we'll, we'll, we're going to be trying to put out uh, the the recording afterwards too, and you know, with with no the full recording. So, um, uh, yeah, but thank you and tune in. We're going to be getting started here in a few minutes. 
Um, and then after the opening prayer, uh, we'll be coming back. You'll be hearing a little bit more interviews while people eat dinner so that you guys have something to, uh, to watch. And hopefully your guys are sitting around the dinner table right now joining us and breaking bread with us, even virtually. So it's amazing that you can uh, we can do that this way. And Jamie, thank you so much for coming from Phoenix. It's yes, so good. It's cold here. My I, surprisingly, right? I know, El Paso, Texas. I thought we were going to the south. <laughs> yeah, it just happened yesterday because they knew we knew you were coming in. So It's okay. I will take the cold because it is really an awesome thing to be here. And what you guys are doing down here is really incredible and I'm really excited people at home get to see it because being here we can feel it so yes. it's really awesome I can't wait to hear everything you have to say tonight thank you yeah we got some big announcements really excited uh, so make sure you watch all the way through to the end um, I've got a special big announcement too at the very very end at the uh, so yeah pretty exciting stuff so they can't tell that I'm smiling <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got a get a printed mask with a smile on there so we okay, should. God bless you guys thank you so much again thank we'll you see you so soon much, Mike. I appreciate it Awesome. I'm just peeking around the room right now just to see if there's anybody else that I know wanted to talk to y'all and didn't get the chance. This is such a great scene here. Well, we are getting ready to get started. And like Mark said, we're going to have some uh, opening prayer. There's going to be some dinner time. You know, get your snacks and everything ready at home and uh, get curled up on the couch and get ready to see some really, really amazing speeches coming to you tonight. Uh, from some really awesome pro-lifers getting a lot done. So here's our friend Rebecca. Alrighty, thank you guys so much. So we're going to begin and start soon already. So enjoy the rest of the evening and we'll get back to you in a little bit already. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Good evening. Oh, are you excited to be in a real room with real people? And for those joining us on the live stream, are you excited to be watching, joining with all these other people? Oh, it is such a blessing to be together with you. Thanks to those who are even still in line as they're coming in. Thanks to those who are in the overflow room. Thanks to those who are joining us on the virtual live stream. I want to be the very first to welcome you to this fifth annual Pro-Life Banquet. Tonight, we are going to have lots of reasons to rejoice. And the theme could not be more appropriate for what we are going to be talking about tonight. My name is David B. Wright, and I am blessed to be serving as your guest host here this evening, and I get to help navigate us through some of the time together. But you're going to be hearing from amazing speakers throughout the evening. You're going to hear amazing reports of how lives are being saved, hearts and minds are being changed, souls are being impact, impacted, and literally the very course of history is being changed because of you and the other people who are a part of the Southwest Coalition for Life. So let me just ask you, are you excited to be a part of this? Okay, those joining us on the live stream, I know you're sitting there in your pajamas while everybody else is dressed up. Are you excited to be a part of this? You are, okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. I can hear them, can't you hear them? It is such a joy and honor and blessing to be with you. I live in Fredericksburg, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. I flew in yesterday, got to have some time with our keynote speaker, Sister Didi, last night, as well as with Mark Cavalier, the fearless executive director of the Southwest Coalition for Life. And then today, this morning, we got to work with a meeting of leaders of pro-life organizations throughout New Mexico and in this region of Texas, charting the course of all the opportunities we have to save even more more lives in the coming months and then the pinnacle experience was coming together for this event here tonight we're going to start the most important way that we possibly can and that is with a word of opening prayer and for our opening prayer we're going to hear from the pastor of Our Lady of Assumption Parish right here in El Paso. He also serves as the associate state chaplain for the Texas State Council of the Knights of Columbus. He sits on the board of directors for the Guiding Star El Paso Pregnancy Medical Center. And he also assists with Rachel's Vineyard Retreats for Healing and Forgiveness after abortion. So please welcome for the opening prayer, Father Mark Salas. Try this one. Okay. I do, I know you Beloved, how wonderful that not even a pandemic can keep us from that great culture that we love, which is life itself, and this amazing technology to be able to remotely um, enjoy a meal uh, safely and also to raise money and awareness in such greater number for something as passionate and amazing as an innocent heartbeat. 
that adds to this great music, the great timpani or symphony of God's creation. Uh, it's one of my favorite scenes from the Chronicles of Narnia, the magician's nephew, the creation of Narnia. It's this deep bellowing sound in the darkness that pierces it. And then from there, the chorus of creation sings back all in unison to this great uh, deep drone of Aslan's roar of life. Um, may that same passion and, and, and intensity always pierce our hearts uh, for the great life uh, that everyone uh, shares in that heartbeat by heartbeat, that timpani of sound. And I don't know if you've ever had the joy. I remember when my sister was, um, she's 14 years younger than me, and I remind her every time I see her at Thanksgiving, which was recent, and to say, I remember when I first heard your heartbeat, and I'll never forget. You know, I would hear my mom's heartbeat all the time. I had asthma, so to calm me down, she had to match my, well, I had to match my heartbeat, who couldn't breathe, to her heartbeat. And then when that heartbeat was interrupted by my sister's heartbeat, um, it shows you the beauty of the great symphony of life that the master has given us. So we'll bless this evening, this amazing technology, the amazing energy of Mark Cavalier to be able to provide so many means to show off the culture of life, to show off the heartbeat that God has resonating in each heart. Help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and always and forever. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this great ministry to show and appreciate and grow the culture of life from its inception to its, uh, till you call them to the chorus in heaven. May the songs of the saints in this life and the life to come always beat bright radiant in all that we say and all that we do. Bless our work, especially now in this time of pandemic uncertainty, when so many mothers and fathers contemplate that they cannot bring this heartbeat into song in this life during this pandemic. Bless them, sanctify them, grant them the light, and grant us the strength to be there at the sidewalks, praying, intercessing, and supporting um, all life, all parents. We give you thanks for all the various means that we can do this. We give you thanks for this amazing technology that keeps us tethered to one another, all the households, all this evening. Thanks for this facility, uh, for Grace Gardens, who is able to host us in a safe way. We ask you to bless us and to sanctify this. Bless those who are suffering during this pandemic, uh, medically, especially Sandra, whom I anointed and commended a couple hours ago, and to um, so many COVID patients and their beloved who are in the parking lots and at home, uh, waiting to see what comes of the disease. We ask you to bless all those who, through this um, pandemic, have uh, responded, not only in the Tuesday of uh, giving, but all the various ways that they show their support, their love, their prayer for the life you have entrusted to all these moms and dads. Bless every child that they may always be safe, especially in their mother's womb. May they always be safe under the watchful and constant heartbeat of a loving mother. And bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we're about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, thank you for joining us virtually and in person. Enjoy your meals and this evening. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, dinner is about to be served. Now, let me just tell you, as good as the dinner is going to be, the program, which is going to start back shortly, is going to be even better. And I know that's gonna be hard to top, especially when you're eyeing those desserts sitting right in front of you. Now, the people on the live stream right now are going, not fair. I don't get to eat what they eat. I don't get those little desserts in front of them. I'm gonna date myself here. Do any of you remember when I was in elementary school, they had these books called Choose Your Own Adventure Books where you would go through, who, who remembers Choose Your Own Adventure Books? Okay, thank you. Mark Cavalier wasn't even born when those were created, but that's okay. So the advantage of those joining us on the live stream is they get to choose their own meal. Isn't that awesome? They are at home watching us. They get to choose your own meal. So enjoy your meal. And also for those joining on the live stream, we're going to have interviews going on through the time. You don't want to watch all of us eating. You get to hear great interviews. You get to eat your own food. And we get to all come back together in a few minutes for an amazing program. So please enjoy your dinner. Enjoy fellowship with the people at your table. And we'll be back in a few minutes.
Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and uh, waiting through that little break. We are getting dinner served for everybody here, but I had a few minutes before we start playing a video for you that I wanted to bring on one more person uh, to do an interview. We might try to sneak these in throughout the night just because there's so many great pro-life people here. So I wanted to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Aubrey Singleton, Hi. and she is the Southwest Regional Director for the Center for Bioethical Reform. So Abra, tell us uh, what brings you here tonight, what do you do, and how can everybody see it? Uh, so I came because Jamie invited me, um, and uh, it was really awesome. We had a really cool conference earlier today with different uh, pro-life leaders in the Southwest region, and really just did a lot of brainstorming, so that was really cool. And this banquet is amazing. Um, and as far as what I do, so uh, CBR, uh, we work to make abortion unthinkable, so we use abortion victim photography, and uh, mainly we focus on college campuses uh, to try to show the truth of abortion. And uh, you can check out our website, it's abortionno.org. And we're also on Facebook and Twitter and Parler and Instagram, uh, Center for Bioethical Reform, you can find us that way, so yeah. Awesome, cool. Thank you so much for being here tonight and for being my travel buddy. I really appreciate it. <laughs> cool. We are going to be going to a video here in just a few short minutes. I just wanted to uh, say thank you guys again for everything that you guys are doing to support Mark Cavalier and the Southwest Coalition for Life down here. It is incredible to see all the work that they are doing, and um, I'm so excited to be a part. So thank you guys. Please continue to watch and enjoy your night. And Gracie Lynn, you go to bed. Mommy loves you. have here the paper from the official headline, Abortion Clinic Closing Doors in Las Cruces. Reproductive Services is I'm really excited. We're here with the State of Storks Mobile Ultrasound Unit passing through El Paso. I know for a fact that the number of turnaways and the number of saves would just increase exponentially in El Paso, right here outside of Hilltop. If we could offer this unit, I'm confident that it would only, it wouldn't be a matter of if, it would just be a matter of how quickly this next abortion facility would be shut down. Hilltop Women's Reproductive Abortion Center has been closed. God has done so much in just four years since we launched, and now it's time that we raise the bar. And so in less than two years since we even announced the idea, it's a reality. It's here as our Save the Storks mobile medical unit, thanks to you. You made it possible, and we have officially launched. It's real, it's official, but this is just a tool, as amazing and as beautiful as it is. What's even more important is the team of people that God has called together to use this tool to save lives. And so I'm excited to introduce to you the mobile medical team for the Southwest Coalition for Life. Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Gutierrez and I am an OBGYN here in practice in El Paso. Through my training and experience also with ultrasound, I can definitely speak from experience that life begins at conception. And I'm excited to tell you that I am the medical director for the mobile medical unit here at Southwest Coalition for Life. Hi, my name is Julie Winkler and I am the brand new medical mobile unit manager of operations for the Southwest Coalition for Life. I've been the medical mobile unit director for Karen Pregnancy Center of Albuquerque for the last year and a half. And part of my job at CareNet as the mobile unit director was to um, park the, the mobile unit right across the street from the largest late-term abortion facility in the, in the world. We would see women up to 40 weeks walking in that building to have abortions. I am so excited to get to continue this ministry in this part of the state. I'm Anita Vasquez. I got involved with the Coalition for Life through my church as part of Anglicans for Life. When I saw that they needed a nurse manager, I was thrilled, and I am now the nurse manager for the medical mobile unit with Southwest Coalition for Life. I'm Janine Estrada, and I'm from Las Cruces. I'm excited to be one of the sonographers working with women who are vulnerable to abortion to empower them and educate them about the truth and provide them that window into their womb and to help them choose life for their baby. My name is Justine Anchando. I've been working for Salva Coalition for Life for six months. I'm one of the interns, and while we do, we refer women to pregnancy centers. One of the hardest things 
about being a young kid and seeing them carrying the red containers and knowing what they have inside and still seeing women walk into the clinic. What the experience about working as an intern is seeing the turnaways that we have, seeing the baby pictures that Mark and Jessica send, seeing women thanking us of what we do for being out there. We want to give thanks to Guidance Star and all the pregnancy centers for helping us, especially our donors. We wouldn't have done this without you guys, and thank you so much. I'm Yvette Harrell, and I want to thank the Southwest Coalition for Life. I want you to know that in the halls of Congress, I will be talking about the issue of life and how important it is. And I want to thank each and every one of you for standing in support of the coalition. The work that you're doing back in district will equal the work that I'll do in the halls of Congress. Together, we can end the senseless killing, the abortion industry in New Mexico and the Southwest. But it takes all of us and it takes real commitment. I give you my word that as I serve you, as a U.S. Congresswoman, I will always stand for life because life begins at conception. Pray for the moms that are making these decisions. Pray for those that are out advocating for life. And let's work together to end abortion. Let's stand up and protect life. This is the third abortion center that we've been able to stand out in front of and say that this abortion facility is closed. Prayer and fasting works. And it's a testament to God, it's a testament to you and the church showing up to help women. So thank you, and, uh, and let's keep the fight on. We've got three out of five abortion centers closed in three years. Uh, I say we go five for five. Woo! Who else thinks we should go five for five and close down all five abortion facilities? With man, this means may seem impossible, but we know that with God, all things are possible. And all things are possible in part also when God's people have faith and put that faith into action. And tonight we're all going to have opportunities to discern how we can utilize our time, our talent, our treasure to put our faith into action. But tonight we're going to first hear from one man who's the reason that here in this room together tonight. The man who leads this organization, the Southwest Coalition for Life, the one you heard there at the end saying, let's go five for five. He's the executive director of the Southwest Coalition for Life. He's a dear friend, and he's one of my personal heroes, and I know for many of you he is as well. Please welcome to this stage the executive director, Mark Cavalier. All right, thank you guys. Look, look, this is amazing. Look, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful site. I mean, I was saying, you know, they limited the room number as it was. I was like, if we could get half the room filled, I'm going to be happy this year. You guys blew me away. Thank you so, so much. This is so inspiring. I've been asked quite a lot lately, actually, why we would even think of having a banquet right now in El Paso, of all places, um, in people. But, you know, it's not like we're not used to taking both controversial positions as it is, right? So... Mission is too important, and our God is too good. And in the midst of all this insanity and the darkness of the world, that's when the glory of the Lord can shine even brighter. Amen? Amen. So this year, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I don't want to just do, you know, the typical banquet talk and tell you about the past year and tell you a story and ask you for money. That's boring. Um, this year deserves something special, so I wanted to actually bring you into our inner strategy so that you know exactly how much is at stake uh, and exactly what the solution is and so that you do not miss the opportunity to be a part of it. So as I have been promising, um, today we are going to share with you our three secrets to ending abortion peacefully and prayerfully without protest or politics. And somebody asked if that might sound like too big of a promise or too impossible, and I said, not for this crowd. <laughs> because you guys know, as David said, right, with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen? Now, to be clear, of course, that's not to say we do need to be active in politics and even protests at times, which are both essential to our rights and our freedoms. We have a 
many amazing pro-life politicians who've come down and joined us in the room tonight, and I am so humbled and grateful for that. Many of them joined us earlier this morning for a special strategy session to see how we can unite this larger Southwest region to end abortion. But they did agree that it's essential that we have a plan to be able to end abortion in spite of the politics, if that makes sense. So as bad as things may be, especially in New Mexico, and potentially things the, the way things may be going here pretty soon, we need to be able to come together, help moms, save babies in an abortion in spite of the laws and the politics. Amen? So, but first I want to go back a little bit because we have so much to rejoice with the recent closure of this most notorious abortion center in the borderland after almost four decades. But we, we barely came in, the Coalition for Life barely came in at the tail end of that. And there have been many, so many people who have made this possible. Um, one person who has been instrumental in all of this um, was Father Richard Thomas. And some of you know Father Thomas. He was uh, here in El, the El Paso area for you know the 70s and 80s and 90s and had many local ministries and miraculous stories serving the poor in El Paso and Juarez. But he always recognized the least of those among us as our pre-born brothers and sisters who do not even have a voice to cry out with. They don't even have air in their lungs. They don't even have air in their lungs, truly making them the poorest of the poor. And Father Thomas was regarded by many as kind of the, the patriarch of the pro-life movement in the region throughout that time. In one story, he was actually arrested for some peaceful civil disobedience. And the story I've been told is that he was in handcuffs uh, in what has been described to me as a paddy wagon, this van, outside the abortion facility. And he said, you know what? They got this van parked outside this abortion facility arresting pro-lifers. And he says, what if they had a van parked outside this abortion facility with an ultrasound machine inside of it? And this is back in the eight, or late 70s, early 80s, before Save the Storks, before this was an idea. And he had this vision and always wanted to see it. And this year, Father Thomas delivered on that vision. It's, it's happening. And, um, but but as, as saints do, Father Thomas did not just work all, all by himself. He worked he worked others to put their faith into action. And two of his most recent followers were two teenage girls that he inspired to live humbly as pro-life missionaries. So humbly, in fact, that they, will never, they would never share this story with you, which is why it's an, honor. it's an honor for me to be able to be here with you tonight to share it with you. Because you see, in 2003, one of these girls on the right here named Karen began pro-life outreach at UTEP. <laughs> and she met Gabby, who's on the left. And together at UTEP, they started a student group called Former Embryos for Life. <laughs> a few years later, in 2006, uh, Father Thomas passed away. And these two, but these two young women continued his legacy of pro-life activism. In fact, in, in, in fact, in 2011, the ministry that Father Thomas left behind actually fulfilled another one of his visions by purchasing a duplex that was literally right behind the Hilltop Abortion Center on the same block where throughout the next decade until just earlier this year in 2020, Gabby and Karen lived directly behind the Hilltop Abortion Facility. You would literally look out their kitchen window and be looking at the back door where tens of thousands of babies died. And they lived there in secret as missionaries and a lot of their families didn't even know this. And the only reason I'm able to share with you tonight, I'm cringing sharing you, it's been a secret for so long, is because just earlier this year, they moved out and sold the building. And God actually orchestrated that because that actually was initiated before we knew Hilltop was closing. And he, God knew, you're not gonna need to be there anymore, okay? So, so um, but from there, from that, from that spot, they were able to go out to the sidewalk to help women and save countless lives from abortion on a daily basis. Gabby even went on to work with, is Gabby here? I know, I see Karen. Okay, she said she was gonna try to pop in. So um, Gabby even went on to work with national pro-life organizations and names that you should recognize, like Abby Johnson and Lila Rose and David Delighton, before they were names that you recognized. 
And then she, uh, Karen and Gabby together ran 40 Days for Life and brought that to El Paso in 2007 when our host David launched that very first 40 Days for Life campaign. And uh, until very recently when they, they settled down and started their families and they asked for the Coalition for Life to help out. But going back to 2014 when that abortion center first opened in Las Cruces, we didn't know what to do in Las Cruces. And so it was Martha Beasley from Las Cruces called to come and help us. And Gabby came in and she helped us get going. It was my very first introduction to the pro-life movement was Gabby. And she played this video of this crazy guy named David B. Wright. And, um, and that's, what, that's what got me inspired. I was so inspired when Gabby asked for a volunteer to help with the Facebook page and the emails. I said, well, I, I'll, I can help with that, but, but that's it. I can't commit to any more than that. I, I, that's it, I'm not doing any more. And somehow in like 18 months, I was quitting my job and now doing this full time. But, uh, but that's, that's Gabby up there getting us active in Las Cruces, which led to the Coalition for Life today. Uh, then uh, once, I, once I got full time, Karen actually helped train me out on the sidewalk. And so together they laid the foundation for what today has become the Southwest <clears throat> Coalition for Life. And they were absolutely... <laughs> And they were absolutely instrumental in the closure of Hilltop earlier this year. Um, Jessica, can, I, can you come help get some of this stuff ready? Um, and um, in fact, when Hilltop closed earlier this year and we announced it, I really haven't been at peace. <laughs> because everybody, <laughs> everybody's been coming and thanking us. And we kind of just came in at the tail end of this and, and helped here near the end. But Gabby and Karen put in years and years and years of their life there on the sidewalk. And we stand on the shoulders of so many unsung heroes, but more than anyone else, these two amazing women who I'm blessed to call my friends and my mentors. And when we face the question on if we should even have a live event tonight, the single deciding factor for me was this moment right now. Because, because they don't want any recognition, but that's exactly why they deserve it. And so please give them that moment that they deserve because it is my sincerest honor as in collaboration with Father Thomas's community at the Lord's Ranch, I would like to present the very first ever Father Richard Thomas Servant of Life Award to Mrs. Gabriele Avila and Mrs. Karen Cates. Thank you, Mark. Um, it, it really is a very special honor for me to receive this Father Thomas Award because he was very instrumental, actually, in, um, in my pro-life walk. I was just a young teen, and I was looking to get involved, and he got and introduced me to many sidewalk heroes through his Las Alas community. I just want to share a little story, a little bit. Often women arriving for abortions are accompanied by a boyfriend, a husband, a friend. And while she stays inside, many times they'll come and grab something from a car or they'll wait in the car while she's inside the abortion clinic or they'll come out for a smoke. But for whatever reason that they came out, I knew it was a God-given lifeline to save that baby. So I'd offer them a big smile. And here's something that I would often tell them if they came to talk to me in the alleyway of Hilltop. 
I say, your friend in there has probably been crying for days. She may not have slept all night. She didn't eat breakfast. Her mind is in a fog, and, she could, and, she, and all she could see is through this tunnel of fear. But you, you, her friend who came with her, are not suffering the darkness she's in, and you can help her make a better decision. This morning, you could be that baby's hero. That baby is in deep, dangerous water, and he will drown and die very soon. You're the lifesaver that can be thrown towards that mother and pull her back to dry land. Here's your chance to save someone's life, I would tell them. And then I would say, get back in there. Give her a big hug. Let her know you are there for her. Tell her she doesn't have to have the abortion today, that there's a lot of help available for her. And get her out of there. And you know what? Many times they would do just that. On one occasion, a boyfriend sent his guy friend to drive his girlfriend from Las Cruces to Hilltop. And he was texting her pictures and info that I was giving him on the sidewalk. He was in tears pleading with her to come out over text messages. And this young woman eventually did come out. And many months later, that guy, with a ton of joy and excitement, called me at home to say that she was excited planning her baby shower. Really, anybody, really anybody that stands outside an abortion clinic has a very special opportunity to help save someone's life. You have a unique opportunity to change the course of history for an entire family. So I encourage everyone who's in here to go and stand on the abortion clinic sidewalk and let your prayers bring hope and love to the hurting. Tonight, we can all be that lifesaver that could be tossed towards abortion-minded mothers. So let us give and support the Southwest Coalition for Life generously. And through my years outside Hilltop, I really rejoice in all the mothers who decided to keep their babies. And today, I praise God that Hilltop has closed, that no more heartbeats will be snuffed out on that hill. Praise God. Thank you. And it took a lot to get Gabby to be here with us tonight, but she managed to pull it off, and she was listening and saw you uh, from the back. But um, it is my honor, too. She's the one that roped me into all this. Um, Ms. Gabby Avila. It's so uh, special for me to be here today. <laughs> um, I'm very humbled, you know, to receive this award recognition. Um, and one of the things that Father Thomas taught us was, you don't receive all these awards or whatever. He never cared for them, you know, and, and he taught us to do that, you know, to work humbly and give, give God all the glory for it. Um, I want to um, dedicate this time and the time that I gave um, to this community, to our community, to El Paso, um, I want to dedicate it to my dad. Um, he passed away a month ago. Um, because of COVID. Um, so as you can see, it's been really rough for my family and, and also losing my mother-in-law to COVID has been really tough. Um, and, you know, my dad was the first one to, to tell me. Um, he said, go, do, do what you're being called to do. Um, especially that in that moment that... Uh, God called me to leave home, which is really hard for, for a Mexican young woman to just to leave home, you know, because you're supposed to leave home married. <laughs> um, so uh, that was really special, you know, to, you know, in, in these past weeks that we've been thinking about my dad, thinking about his life and conversations we've had, um, you know, that, that's something that I hold very dear to my heart. Um, you know, my... Uh, 
as a young person, as a child, my lifelong goal was to be a missionary and to be a doctor like my dad and save lives. Um, and that was a, a huge desire in my heart. But then once getting through college, you know, and you're seeing the realities of life, well, if, you know, if I'm a doctor, it's gonna be hard to be a mother. Well, what about this or that? Um, but anyway, my dream did come true. Um, I, I have a degree in microbiology, so I'm a lover of science, believer in science. Um, and I also got to save lives. And you know, that's one thing that I don't regret at all in my life. I could, right, like right now I could die and say, yes, I did what I was called to do. Um, I don't regret giving, I don't regret giving God my youth. Um, and I can say, you know, I lived a good single life. It was fun. Of course, there was, there was difficult times. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that I still remember the day that I chose to follow the path of God. Um, I went to a retreat where I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Let's change mics here. Sorry. <laughs> Our apologies, guys. This hasn't been an issue in years past. Here, just. So in that retreat was when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, all the charismatic senses that you can imagine were there at the retreat. And at that retreat, to be there for, uh, which is, um, and that, whole, that daily mass ended up being three hours long. So you can imagine the kind of transformation that, that went through my life. Um, but I, I started searching for ways to serve God, and God kept putting signs in my way and I just kept saying, no, that couldn't be it. No, until I ran in to a group of young women at UTEP holding up uh, aborted baby signs. Um, so I, I went up to one of those girls and I got their phone number and I called her a couple times. I didn't try that hard. Um, I was still searching until one of my aunts said, hey, Gabby, why don't you go to La Sala? Um, they're charismatic. You might like it. So I show up to this place, people are raising their arms, praising the Lord, being extremely joyful, and I was a little scared, but to my surprise, I saw those same young women that were at UTEP protesting Planned Parenthood there at Las Salas. And that young woman that gave me for her phone number was Karen. <laughs> Uh, so you can see how God puts people together and, you know, we were, oh, you know already, we were neighbors and, you know, all the wonderful things that we were able to do together um, to close down Hilltop, which was our goal in life. <laughs> uh, and Karen and I together because of Father Thomas. Um, Father Thomas taught us that all life is sacred, right? All life is sacred. Um, but the most important life is life in the womb. And he taught us that life is always first. We must do everything we can to put life first and defend the unborn. And do what we can as Christians, as Catholics, to continue this work. Oh, if you're, you know, being pushed by other people, by other Catholics, you know that all oh, life in the womb isn't that important. Stop blending the politics with your belief. You are Catholic. You are a Christian. We follow the Bible. We follow the catechism of the Catholic Church. Don't be straight away. Life comes first. We must defend life first. And I can tell you that because we've seen that outside of these abortion clinics day to day and we need to continue supporting these groups, supporting the coalition 
to keep this work going to save lives. So anyway, um, I'm almost done. Uh, you know, living life as a missionary was awesome. Um, and of course, the amount of persecution and spiritual attacks that we received were very numerous. Um, I'll tell you one semi-comical one. I was uh, literally out the door to give a presentation to a youth group uh, with my friend Gabe Rivera. I was going to do a pro-life presentation, talk about chastity, pro-life. And guess who was parked outside of my house? Gloria Martinez and her daughter and the nurse manager from Hilltop. So you can imagine, I was like, if I come out, she's going to see me. She, she can't know where I live. So I took about almost an hour praying and then they finally left. They were having, probably fighting, having a discussion, you know, and they finally left. They had no idea I was there. Um, but that was, you know, to me it was comical. You know, I made it to the retreat. We did great. It was, it was an awesome turnout. Um, but, you know, mentioning, uh, Gloria Martinez, Dr. Thayard. Um, It was a really, I guess in a way, beautiful manner to get to know them by standing outside of the abortion clinic. Um, I know it's weird and it sounds weird that, wow, you really got to know them, like not entirely, but I got to know their behaviors. You know, we we get to know when they're having a bad day, when when they're in a bad mood. They're human too, they're human too. Um, and you know when, when things are, are going great for them, when things are going terribly for them, maybe in their family. But I can truly say I grew a very deep love for them. Um, when, when Gloria passed away, her and her husband, it was very devastating to me. Um, and it challenged me even more. You know, Dr. Thayard um, survived COVID. Um, he's working again. But that should be a very uh, strong calling for us to continue to, to pray harder, fast more, stop being afraid of making those extra sacrifices for the salvation of souls. Because that is the most important thing. That's, the, that's our most important goal, to save souls. And David B. Wright says it all the time, you know, with 40 Days for Life, we're there to save souls. And we have Dr. Thayer to work on. What better joy would that be to have Dr. Thayard on our side, you know, on the side of God, right? <clears throat> so my final advice and note would be, you know, to the youth, um, give God your youth. Um, you won't regret it. Do it with joy. Don't be like, oh, who am I going to marry? I, I want to have a lot of kids. No, do it with joy. Serve God with your full heart, and you will see things will add up. You will be happy because you're doing what God wants you to do, and he, God wants you to be happy. And for the married single people, um, I had so many married people come up to me all the time and say, oh, Gabby, I wish I did what you do. And in my head, I'm like, what the heck are they saying? I told them, you know what? Do you have kids? Do you have family? That's the most pro-life activity job you can do for our community. To have children, to, to follow the word of God, to be open to life, and to raise children in the faith. Um, so if you ever feel that way, stop. You're, you're doing it already. You have your children. Keep raising them. Be open to life. Um, so thank you all for listening to us. Oh, sorry, Mark. Um, and I want to, you know, I want to especially thank, um, you know, the Lord's Ranch community. Um, you know, they were, they, they're my family also. I don't know if anybody was, is here for, from the ranch today. Um, but I just want to tell you that... I couldn't have done anything really in my life without their, um, their support, their words of wisdom, their prayers, um, their, their constant, constant prayers and, and, and reteaching us and retelling us all of the wonderful teachings of Father Richard Thomas. And if you don't know him, get to know him. He's so wonderful, he's so holy, and he is so pro-life.
Thank you. There you go. Okay. Gabby and Karen are the real deal. And I, almost every day I use them as a barometer. I'm like, what would Gabby and Karen do? So now Gabby and Karen, uh, one more time please for Gabby and Karen as they, I don't, th thank you Gabby. Um, Okay, I know you. I know you have to take off, but uh, now they didn't just do 40 days. They didn't just do an hour a week. They went all in. They inspired me to go all in. And tonight you are here because you want to help moms save babies and abortion. Is that right? Say yes. yes. Okay. The best way to do that is through this United Regional Strategy. And I want you to believe as strongly and as confidently as I do that you can be a part of God's solution. And after you believe that, I want you to make a and Karen sized commitment. Are you cool with that right now? Say yes. Okay. Um, now, this commitment, I want you to make this commitment with what you see up here that you're going to commit as soon as you know that this is the solution to ending abortion, you will go all in. Does that sound all right? Say yes. Okay. Now, what does going all in mean? So, you see these Christmas lights on the left? They're not going all in, but this family, they know what it means to go all in, right? <laughs> this guy. He's not all in, okay? But this guy, <laughs> it looks like some of our pro-life families that pray out on the sidewalk, right? Okay, somebody pointed at me. I've only got five. Um, but um, so, so they're, they are going all in, and uh, who, knows here, who here knows what Tony Robbins says? He says, if you want to take the island, what do you do? You burn the boats. Right? So if we want to take the culture for life and we want to take the culture for God, we've got to be all in. And that's the plan tonight. Once you're all in, we're going to burn the boats. And then we're going to be back here next year celebrating four, if not five, of five. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, at the very end, um, after Sister Dee Dee and David, I'm going to come back up with one last bonus announcement right at the very end to build this coalition even more so that not beyond just helping moms and babies, especially with what I think are going to be some pretty challenging times ahead for the pro-life community, we also are going to be a network for one another as well in these challenging times. Now, I'm also going to ask you to pray about each of you for the year 2020, sacrificing a one-time gift um, that is equal to or greater than what you pay for your rent or mortgage every month. And I was thinking of that because of Gabby and Karen, if they could live behind an abortion clinic for 10 years, it made me wonder, can I sacrifice even just a month, at least the financial equivalent or more, to, uh, to, to helping moms and saving, uh, helping moms save their babies? And I'm also going to ask you for a pledge of monthly support starting next year in 2021 that is equal to or greater than what you pay every month for your cell phone service. Ooh, things are getting real. Okay, because, but really, we need to ask ourselves, is this worth it? Is this worth it at least not, at least that much? So keep those two numbers in your head just as a starting point. Because God has showed us this process. He has allowed us to learn from the best. We know how to do it. I'm going to show you now, but I want you to make that commitment with me now in investing in this team of people that God has called to help you be a part of the solution peacefully and prayerfully. Are you ready to do that with me right now? Say yes. Okay, so this is a commitment. Say, Mark, I commit. That as soon as I know, this is the solution to ending abortion, I will go all in, like Karen and Gabby. Wow, that's impressive. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we are, we're three down, we're two to go in the borderland, and you can be a part of it. You can tell your children and your grandchildren that women were being harmed, children were dying in your community for 40 years, and you were part of the coalition that was united across state lines and denominational lines and partisan lines that stood up and said enough is enough, not in our backyard and not in our watch. So for those of you who don't know by now, I have an obsession with helping people realize that it is not just enough to petition Caesar to help our neighbor for us. Right? We've got to put our faith in action. We've got to get our knees on the ground and petition our king, who responds a lot better, and actually help our neighbors in love and compassion and action. Nothing gets me more excited than that. And I cannot rest as long as even one woman feels like she has no other option than to darken the doorway of an abortion facility in our community. My only skill, though, really, is that I just hate reinventing the wheel. And all I've done is take best practices and these three secrets that I've learned from others who have already figured it out and have been seeing results and bringing them here to help local moms choose life like Jackie. Some of you might remember Jackie. 
She had paid $800 for an abortion at 16 weeks and changed her mind at the last minute. We were able to refund her money to her, and just a few weeks ago, she was there to pray with us at the memorial at the Hilltop Closure. Um, all right. So secret number one, how to help moms be heroes with love, compassion, and action while also building the future of the pro-life movement. Okay, now, before I got involved and had seen abortion up close and personal in my own hometown, um, I had seen this exclusively as a political issue. You know, I was a keyboard warrior, but I never actually addressed it and faced it until that abortion center opened in Las Cruces in my hometown. And so after trying protests and even sidewalk counseling, we learned about this guy, Brian Westbrook, with the Coalition for Life in St. Louis. And he had this novel idea, right, that if we're just trying to persuade women to stop their cars and persuade them to talk to us and persuade them to, uh, to leave and go to a pregnancy center and persuade them to choose life. All we're doing is about persuasion. So he literally took the textbook on the psychology of persuasion and pioneered this new innovative method on the sidewalk in St. Louis. And when he started off using, they had been using a counseling method. They had been having about 15 turnaways per year. And after he tried this new persuasion method, that's been up close to 400 turnaways a year. You can see the difference um, uh, every single year in the community of St. Louis. Last year, they were down to the last abortion center in the entire state of Missouri and now have essentially become the first abortion-free state. And outside of that abortion center, every single hour they were open was a Coalition for Life intern. Okay, this internship program is the key. It's a program that takes passionate pro-life young adults who, um, and enables them to do what they love more by giving them just enough pay so that they you know, don't have to work part-time at Subway and then only have an hour here and there to volunteer. We can actually enable them to do 10, 15, 20 hours a week doing what they love the best uh, but because of the support of the pro-life community. Okay. Um, and, uh, and the first thing when a woman comes to the abortion center encounters, uh, that was me with Brian learning this and going through the whole, the whole pr training program in St. Louis. Uh, but the first time that they see is a, uh, is a compassionate intern who is one of their peers, reaching out to them in compassion and love without any judgment or shame, okay, which they're more likely to relate to than some guy who's twice their age. And as a side benefit, this intern program is also building up these new young leaders and giving them the experience to become the future leaders of our movement. Now, while they are my personal heroes, though, what we actually try our interns is that we are actually, surprisingly, maybe at first, we're not in the business of saving babies. And you're like, well, wait a minute, what are we even here for tonight? But what we do is we say that we are here to connect the women to the care she needs so that she can be the one to save her baby. Because whether we like it or not, she is the only person who can make that decision. Okay, and in this, in today's cult, overwhelming culture of death and a billion dollar abortion industry that is out to prey upon her fears, okay, and she chooses life in the face of that, she is the hero in that story and we are not gonna take that away from her. Okay, we're just the sidekicks. And so really quick, I wanted to recognize one of our actual heroes who has saved a life. I've never saved a life. We have a quick three minute video and then I want to introduce her to you tonight. My name is Brianne Escamilla, and I have a three-year-old daughter named Emily. Um, and I'm five months pregnant. With her, when I told when I found I was pregnant, her dad told me an abortion, and I didn't. And he told me like. Um, she's gonna ruin your life, you know, you're not gonna go to college and this and that. And then I found out I was pregnant. And then she gave me a reason to go to college. He's going away for, to prison for four years. So I was dealing with that. I decided to take a pregnancy test and it came back positive. I was kind of like, how am I gonna do it? You know, with her, with a newborn baby, didn't have a job. Um, couldn't pay rent. In that same week, I had gotten the papers, um, like the whole thing, saying if I didn't pay, and there was a late fee on top of that, um, that I was gonna kicked out. Since I already were already pawned everything that was worth something, um, I thought worst case I'd have to pack up everything in my car and like go to a shelter or something. I wouldn't have had any other option. The father, when I told him I was pregnant, he kept pushing me to get an abortion. That's pretty much why I went to the abortion clinic. And also when I went through the abortion, like mentally, I was like, you know what, this is, this is a hard lesson I have to learn. 
Um, maybe I was thinking like, like maybe God wants me to learn like that way, you know? Because I honestly didn't think like I could do it. So I went to the abortion clinic. When I pulled up, I met a gentleman named Brian. And he told me like about the free ultrasound and the benefits. I can like just talk to somebody, see what other options are. They told me about adoption. So I was like, okay, maybe we'll do adoption. And the adoption agency told me about this foundation to help pay for rent. And then I decided to keep my baby. So like it all worked out in the end. If Brian wasn't there, I'd probably, I probably would have gotten an abortion. But I work from home now. I was able to get a job for like a call center. I finished all my prerequisites to get into nursing school. Like the reason I chose nursing is because I want to feel like I'm helping someone the way, you know, God's helped me and the peace put people in my life to get to where I'm at now, like Brian. We can have a brother. Now, now we filmed that a few months ago, and we didn't know if she'd be able to make it because her due date was November or December second, which is tomorrow. But it turns out she went into labor a little bit early, and so we're going to come to you, um, Brianne. But we have a small token, and we have some gifts for you that says, in, in present you to our hero, <laughs> Brianne Escamilla, in loving admiration for your courage, sacrifice, and your love for Emily and baby Emilio, who is here with us tonight. So. That's what I like to see. Thank you guys so much. And that is what's going to change this movement is when we realize that that is the issue, okay? We're not out this to save babies. We're out this to empower moms and help them be the heroes. All right, now we're going to move along and the last, the last two come up real quick. Um, but uh, the, the, last, the, the last two secrets that I learned, the second secret I learned um, in all this was from Heather Gardner with the Central Texas Coalition in Austin. She was part of the original coalition. She was depicted in the movie Unplanned, helped Abby Johnson quit, got to spend two days with her. And, um, uh, and, and so she, she gave a concept that was a pretty simple concept, but it kind of just was like this epiphany for me. And so I renamed it uh, a little bit fun. It's, it's called How to Ethically Rob Abortion Centers Blind, Leading to Their Inevitable, Unceremonious, and Permanent Closures. Okay. so. I added a little bit of flair there, but Heather helped me to understand that on one hand, you have these abortion businesses that are in the business of crisis manipulation. They create and manufacture this crisis. And on the other hand, you have these amazing pregnancy centers that excel in crisis management. They want nothing more than to help women, right? And there's women over here that just want help for free. They just want somebody to help them. But the problem is there's nobody to connect the two, all right? And that is where we need crisis intervention. And that is where the Southwest Coalition for Life comes in to connect and refer all women going to the abortion center to the amazing resources in our town. All right, so really that's what we uh, teach our interns to do. We are just the sales force for the pregnancy centers and the resources to connect them. So simple enough again, but um, this, and the reason this works is because as we know, the abortion industry is just in it for what? For profit, right? And as soon as we can make it not profitable for them, they shut their doors. In fact, the Las Cruces abortion facility, when they closed, they actually cited on the phone the reason for closing that branch was due to financial trouble for suddenly not getting enough patients, which was eight months after we launched our referral program. So, uh, and, and actually, I want you to remember this too, especially for times ahead. That was actually while we were still under the Obama administration with some of the most pro-abortion policies in place and in New Mexico, which was one of the most abortion-friendly states in the nation, okay? Then, so that one closed. 2018, reproductive services closed, and now in 2020, that one's closed. So that's why I want you to know that this is how this works, okay? 
again, I wanted to bring you in and do something and bring you into this inner strategy. Also, not only connecting them to care, but one thing we've learned is important this year is connecting them to legal support. And this is something we hadn't heard. And very briefly, um, our attorney, some of you have been following, he's been helping with some really big cases. So he actually has a quick update uh, on some of the things that I think have just even been happening today. Uh, so, Seibel, by the way, from uh, Abortion on Trial. Thanks, Mark. You know, I've always known Mark to be a man of intense faith, and I'm, I'm so glad that he's put faith in abortion on trial. He's trusted God and to do some legal work for him, and uh, I can't believe that he trusted me and trusted God to have this microphone for the next couple of minutes, but this is going to be a test of his faith. I'm going to tell you something. I got a message. Rejoice. We are winning. For the people at home, it's hashtag rejoice, hashtag winning. You can type that in. And the reason we are winning is because we are united as a pro-life community. And we're becoming more and more united every day. Just at this banquet, we have Abortion on Trial, Southwest Coalition for Life, leaders from all across the, co the, the country, essentially. All the people in this room, all the people online coming together to take back the stronghold of the abortion industry in New Mexico and the Southwest. So let me tell you a couple of things we've done to her. Most woman at Francis the Arts Clinic. And she dared to go in and question his malpractice and he had her arrested. Southwest Coalition for Life got her medical care and got her competent legal counsel to empower her to seek justice for this negligence and malpractice. And if that were, weren't enough, together we have taken on a security guard here at the clinic, at Franz Seard's clinic, who is sexually harassing and making racial, racial uh, slurs against our sidewalk advocates. And through Mark and, and, and the cooperation of Abortion on Trial, we got him removed from the sidewalk. And it is now a safer place for the women entering there and the, the people who are praying and ministering to these women. Then we filed a medical board complaint against Franz Theard for, for abandoning his patients and not taking care of that woman. If that weren't enough, Mark and the entire community here in New Mexico has been supporting a malpractice case against the late-term abortionist Curtis Boyd in Albuquerque, New Mexico. For a 23-year-old woman who made the mistake of choosing an elective abortion at six months gestational age, and by the end of the week, she was gasping for air. She told her mother, I'm gonna die. Because of the sepsis that she contracted, they rushed her to an emergency d &E and she had a heart attack on the table. And they tried to resuscitate her for about an hour and a half, and she never came back. But through the efforts of this pro-life community, through the efforts of Southwest Coalition for Life, we are pursuing a ma uh, malpractice claim against this late-term abortionist, and we will hold them to justice. And that's the important thing, is we're doing all this, and this is costing the abortion industry money out of their pockets. It is reducing their bottom line, because we, every time we file one of these suits, it's tens of thousands of dollars that they have to pay in attorney's fees. Plus, they have all the negative publicity. They have all the negative things that come along with it. So when we're doing this, we're reducing their bottom line, and if Mark's keeping the people off, uh, out of their clinic in the first place, we're gonna close these clinics down eventually. And if we look at what has happened just in the last month, just in the last month, Dr. Theard's clinic's been closed for 30 days, and praise God through the efforts of everybody in this room and everybody all together, we had an abortion-free Diocese of Las Cruces for 30 days. Praise God.
So we have built a stronghold here in New Mexico uh, where we have the most pro-abortion hostile jurisdiction in the country. I don't care about New York. This is the most hostile jurisdiction. And we need to keep that up. Tonight is building the resources so we can take what Mark did here and created a foothold and expand that to New Mexico and the entire Southwest. And how we do that is we follow the courage and the vision that Mark and his people have done. And I'm gonna give you an example. Hustini, uh, who's here tonight and was a subject of a video, is a 20-year-old little girl. Well, woman, I should say. A um, 20-year-old woman, just beginning her life. She goes out to the sidewalk every day. She's been yelled at by, and get this, pro-life ad advocates about her faith. She's been sexually harassed by a security guard. She has been assault and, assaulted and battered by a clinic worker. She has given everything. She has risked everything. She has trust, trusted God and risked risked everything for the only thing that matters, which is life. And that's the type of culture that Mark has built. And I want to say for Abortion on Trial, my executive director, Jamie Jeffries, is here today, and for everybody at Abortion on Trial, we trust people like Hustini on the sidewalk. We trust Southwest Coalition for Life to minister to these women. We trust Mark's vision his incredible vision on how to close these clinics. We trust God, and we're going all in, and we're giving everything at abortion on trial. My question to you is, will you do the same tonight? Will you consider going all in, trusting God, and giving up a little bit of your safety, knowing he's going to protect you and you're going to be safe to create a better world, to protect life? Because I guarantee you, if you go all in, in a couple of years, we'll be sitting up here and saying, rejoice, we have won. New Mexico and the Southwest are abortion free. That day is coming very soon under this vision. And I want you to all consider that and thank you for considering that pledge tonight. Enjoy your meal and God bless you all. Thank you, Mike. Okay. So I'm closing you out with the third secret that we learned and as the conclusion, which is, goes really quick because it pretty much speaks for itself. But I call this one how to revolutionize the meaning of pro-life with life-saving innovations and cutting-edge med medical technology. And it's not that big of a secret because you probably saw it parked outside on the way in. Um, so, uh, but I think you get this. We learned this. Eddie Perez in San Antonio, who did this parked a Storks bus um, outside of an abortion facility almost every day for two, almost two years, and took away enough of their pain customers that by helping so many women uh, be heroes, that the facility shut down permanently, and now they just moved on to the next one. So. Because now when we have this here, we can say, you know, you don't even have to drive across town. You don't have to even, you know, move your car. It's here. It's free. That window into the womb. And it, 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 especially this amazing ultrasound machine that we got does these 3D and 4D images. We now can also send those images directly to her phone through a link so that she's able to uh, share those. It's got an onboard Wi-Fi that we're getting innovative. We're exploring new ways to use this to have like a hotspot so that we could potentially even reach women inside the abortion clinic with a free Wi-Fi hotspot while they're waiting in the waiting room. All right. Right, things that have never been tried before. Um, and one thing that I'm, I've already talked to some of the, the pregnancy centers about trying this, as far as I know, this has never been used in pro-life work yet before, but with this machine that we got, you can actually send the files to a 3D printer and not give her just an image, but a 3D model of her baby. And so, and so anyway, that's it. Those are the three secrets. So, um, that's that's the quick enhanced strategy I wanted you to bring in. I believe all these things we've learned have kind of are creating this perfect storm, and it's really it's because of you. You've made this possible, um, and it's also because of one person uh, who God sent to help me with all these crazy ideas. Uh, I have the crazy ideas, and she helps make them a reality. She's like, are you talking about me? Is our director of operations Jessica C. Fuentes? I'm actually going to have her, her briefly introduce our keynote speaker, who you're all here to hear tonight, because um, it's a story that only she can tell. Um, but just as she comes up, our goal is to put ourselves out of work. 
okay, by seeing these last two abortion centers close, then uniting this larger uh, southwest region to see the state of New Mexico inspired and helped by El Paso to really become a Cinderella story from the late-term abortion capital of the nation to becoming abortion-free in spite of the laws and politics, in spite of Governor Lujan Grisham, and in spite of Joe Biden, okay? Because, because the church showed up. Uh, thank you guys so much. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jessica Cifuentes, and it is an honor to be here tonight. Um, I have an awesome story to share with you guys. Last year, Mark was generous enough to send us, uh, some of us uh, out to the March for Life in Washington, D.C. And it was an interesting morning. I started off with, I need to go get a battery charger because my phone did not charge. So my husband and I found an Uber took a ride to the Walmart and by the time I got my charger I had left my phone in my car that was the beginning I didn't I couldn't get a hold of Mark or any of the other group that uh, that we were waiting to meet and it took a couple of hours before I finally uh, was able to get Mark's phone number because of course my phone was gone and then the, the day progressed and I was really frustrated and we went to go see the changing of the guards we were really excited it took a 30-minute uber ride and when we finally got to go see the change of the guards, I noticed on the as you're walking in, there was a sign posted that you needed your ID to get in. And I didn't want to say anything because I had already lost my phone, and I was that that you know that one that was like, oh Jessica, again. So I thought, oh, I have to tell them that I don't have my ID. I left it back in our Airbnb. So after waiting in line for about 20 minutes, um, sure enough, the guard said, sorry, ma'am, you, you're not able to come in. And I looked at Eddie, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Here I go again, ruining the day. And we called another Uber. I'm standing there, and I'm telling God, Lord, why do you do this to me? Why do you always, why, why does it always have to happen to me? I have to klutz. And finally, I see our Uber I down, and I tell my husband, Uber's coming. And I'm really excited because we're going to go to the Holocaust. And as we get into the Uber, I, I step to the Uber, and the gentleman has his uh, TV flipped down. Well, I hit my head so hard. My husband realized that. As he was walking in, I'm sitting there, and I, I literally saw stars. And he walks in, and he laughs. He giggles, you know, and he's like, oh, you hit your head. And I look at him, and I'm like, it's not funny. And the blood, <laughs> the blood starts running down my head. At this point, I really looked up and I said, I cannot believe you, Lord. I just told you that I'm like the misfit. And now I walk in and I crack my head on the Uber car. And the Uber driver's pretty quiet, really polite. And he looks through the rear mirror and he's like, oh my gosh, ma'am, do you need me to take you to hospital? It, it looks like you need stitches. And I was like, no, I'm not getting stitches. I'm going to the Holocaust Museum because they're going to close in an hour. So <laughs> in, during the, our walk to the Holocaust Museum, with my hair standing up because it's now crusty. I still have the, a little bit of the blood, but I wanted to go to the museum. Anyway, we ended up going to the mass, braided the day before the march. And as, as soon as the mass, uh, the, the homily was over, I sat on the ground because it was, I mean, if you guys have ever been, there are so many people. It takes, I think mother said about 30 minutes for the priest to walk in and do the, the procession to the altar. But that's how full it is. And I noticed there was these young girls walking around with shirts that said first aid. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to ask them. Uh, because, you know, it had already dried and it was crusty. And <laughs> I thought, well. And the Holy Spirit, I could literally hear, go ask. And I was like, no, Lord, I don't want to ask. I, you, you already ruined my whole day <laughs> losing my phone. And I mean, I could go into other details. Um, but anyway, so finally... I saw one of the young girls, and I thought, well, if anything, I'll just ask if she could clean me up. And uh, so I, I waved her down, and you should have seen her. Her name was, Amy, or I think the girl she called was Amy. She was so excited. She got on her little walkie-talkie thing, and she was like, Amy, code red, code red. <laughs> and she was like, follow us, because I, I need to take you over to first aid. So we walked in, and I saw that there was these cots everywhere, and they laid me down. And one of the doctors came over, and he said, well, it looks like you could. And at that point, I heard from the other side of the room, stitches? Who said stitches? And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you guys our beloved sister, Dee Dee, who will finish the rest of the story. Oh. 
Well, it's getting late, so I'll try to be brief. What, got two hours here or something? No. <laughs> My father used to say, any uh, death but talk to death, so I'll try to not go too long. But anyhow, I'll continue this story. First, I'll say in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Spirit, inspire me. Love of God, consume me. Do the true path, lead me. Mary, my mother, look down upon me with Jesus. Bless me from all evil, from all danger. Preserve me. Amen. So I am the, um, one of my little job side missions. I'm a general surgeon and a family doc, and uh, but I'm the proud I've run the first aid clinic at the Basilica for the March for Life every year. <laughs> and it's usually my chance to tell all my jokes to all the patients that come in because most of them are not code reds. They're usually, um, you know, menstrual cramps or fainties, dehydration. So uh, that that afternoon as I was getting ready to go to the to the first aid, I was going down. We have a clinic in our convent. And I went down and started to look through things that I might use or need. And I stopped and I saw a um, first uh, suture kit. I have a brother that is an orthopedic surgeon and he'd given me a bunch. And I was sitting there going, do I need this? Do I need that? And, and then I said, ah, I threw it and I put, and I'm off to the clinic. So I was so excited that when we had a code red. <laughs> That I, but the, the problem is the only sutures I had in our clinic were um, sutures that you that an ophthalmologist would use for very delicate surgery. So when I kept trying to put these stitches in Jessica's scalp, they kept breaking. So I said, well, we've got it partially closed at least. But, um, and I have a tendency, and I think it's, it's a gift that God allows me to have that, uh, People, when people get sick, special people, um, I've been, I can proudly say I've taken care of saints and sinners. Uh, <laughs> the, the sinners would be when I was stationed in, um, in uh, 2008, I was in Afghanistan, and um, we took care of the Taliban on top of our fantastic soldiers. But before that, um, one of my high school heroes was Mother Teresa of Calcutta, so I had the the often the, the awesome gift of being with her for a week, and then His Eminence Cardinal Hickey, when I was a chief resident in surgery uh, at Georgetown, he had come in from Lords uh, with crushing chest pain, and I happened to be the chief resident on that service, and so I you know we harvested his veins, um, you know we say cracked the chest. Uh, and then helped har um, with the bypass surgery for his eminence. And he, we became very close because at Georgetown, in those good old days, um, we have, do we have any other physicians here, out here? So in the good old days, uh, at least in surgery, we used to be on call every other night at Georgetown. So that's about 128 hours um, of a 148 hour week that we were living in the hospital. And, and the uh, lament, lamentation was that um, being on call every other night meant we missed half the, call, half the cases. So, um, but I, because of that, I um, cared for Cardinal Hickey, and he was um, our cardinal at Washington before, um, you know who, in D.C. And uh, he was a holy, holy, holy uh, cardinal. And so we became very close and my spiritual, you know, how blessed I was. I wasn't a sister then, but how blessed I was to have him to be my spiritual guide all these years, these years while he was still alive. And he helped me and guided me through where I am right now. Um, I'll just quickly, because I don't want to keep everybody, but I'll just, a lot of people want to know how the heck did I end up speaking at the Republican National Convention? <laughs> and so, uh, like, well, it, thank you. It's really the Lord. Um, I was, I'll tell you, um, I was very dis discontent and disconcerted and really, con really concerned about what was going on in August during the, um, campaign and all the rhetoric about uh, Biden being such a great Catholic. And I'm not going to judge a heart, but we can tell, and I tell this to young people, 
um, because they'll they'll all, they'll defend him and saying we 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 can't read hearts, but we certainly can read actions. And when someone says I'm a good Catholic, but then they go and they promote promote the basically the annihilation of an infant in the womb. And I was so thrilled to hear your medical director. I don't know if she's here, but I want to thank her because uh, we have to publicly speak out us medical folks that life begins at conception. Yeah. And that's that's the um, that's medical, that's scientists, that's scientific um, data. I'm not going to be a giraffe or anything else. And as as you said, and as David has said and Mark has said, it's all an industry to make money. When I was I'm sad to tell you that when I was at Georgetown graduating, in 19, um, <laughs> the the uh, we had a we voted to see who what what um, um, Hippocratic I call it the Hippocritical Oath right now but the Hippocratic Oath that we would say and you know for 300 years before Christ Hippocrates or there are many Hippocrates uh, that would say that in part of the vow we would say we would not procure an abortion. And then after, after um, maybe around the 50s, during this, the sexual revolution, um, that started to, to slip out of the, of the vows. And, um, but in 80, I'll, okay, I'll give it away. In 82, when I graduated, I'm, I'm really sad to say that our class, it was almost like 51, 48, 49, wanted to take out the terms to, to remove the abortion. And I was heartbroken because I had lobbied that same year to try to get Mother Teresa of Calcutta to speak at our graduation. And because um, Father Healy um, had a great devotion for the undergraduates, she came that year to speak to the undergrads. So she didn't speak to our class. But so there was that desire to have someone so holy as Mother Teresa, but not, not to follow through in what she had professed, which was that any country that supports the death of the unborn is a country that's going to fall apart. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I don't want to go on and on, but I do think that right now um, we have to be Joan of Arcs. Okay. We have to be prayer warriors, as I said, as they put up the rosary. Um, as they did in the Battle of Lepanto, you know, with Don Quixote praying. I think he had emblazed uh, the rosary on his sword that was from the Spanish king to fight a battle where they were really well outnumbered. And um, it's through our Blessed Mother and our Lord that will carry us through this uh, very turbulent life uh, time in our, in our political history. Um, because, I mean... Uh, uh, you know, with what as I was saying before, with about being Joan of Arc, so we have to be uh, prayerfully and warriors, but we have to be in the state of grace. So, what do I mean by that? We have to be prepared. You know, and sorry, when Joan of Arc was was preparing for battle, and when um, Don Quixote and the Battle of Lepanto were prepared, he had all his soldiers be um, be prepared, go to confession, go to mass. I mean, they were ready. If they died, they were going to go to our Lord in heaven. And so, and when Joan of Arc was had done something mystical, and, and what the Lord had called to free France, she was then come, captured by the canon lawyers in England, the British canon lawyers, and they um, they were going to try to do anything they could to burn her to the stake. We all know the history. And when they asked her, Joan, are you in the state of grace? Her answer was a prayer. She knelt down and she said, Lord, if I'm in the state of grace, please keep me there. Lord, if I'm not in the state of grace, please put me there. And so before for us, I call it uh, COVID cataracts. What we've been going through this year where people have been told they can't go to mass, they can't go to the sacraments. And so we're sort of becoming, uh, you know, in a sense, we've lost some of our punch. And um, so we have to pray and, and try to seek a priest out to go to confession. I'm making a little plea here to keep ourselves as pure as we can. Try to go to mass. Go Hop over to North to uh, um, 
New Mexico to go to mass if you can. Try to go to the sacraments as often as you can because we are going to be, we have to be battle ready. And pray the rosary. There's a beautiful rosary for um, for the United States of America, where each state is mentioned. As we pray to to heal the to pray for that state and for all the souls in that state. And so we have to keep each other in immersion in prayer, stay in the state of grace, and um, you know fight and continue the great work that you all are doing. So I just want to thank you all for inviting me, and I'm very humbled to be here. I really am. Uh, amongst a group that uh, is doing so much work it makes me a little shame because in Washington we're doing some work but nothing like this so uh, we'll keep each other in prayer and thank you very much and God bless you all After we take up the collections for the Southwest Coalition for Life, we're going to take up a collection for a new sound system. Is that okay? Who's in? I'm all in. I'm all in. As we near the end of our time together here in person, I just wanted to share a few reflections before we pray and ask God to lead us in those decisions that Mark set earlier. And the first thing is for us to realize that in 19, early 70s, there was a young woman named Norma who sat down at a restaurant in Dallas with a couple of young scheming attorneys. She was pregnant and they convinced her to be the poster child for a case that they wanted to challenge the Texas laws that prohibited abortion. And Norma became the Roe of Roe versus Wade, the case that unleashed this tragedy on our entire nation in the same state within which many of us have lived or do business in. Since that time, we have lost some 65 million children to abortion. Millions of women have been wounded, some physically, but many more emotionally and spiritually and psychologically. When we look at this problem, I think, you know, Mark was saying, we will actually come to I think the answer is you came in part because yes, we want to be in community, we're made for community, but also because you realize that this is the defining crisis of our generation. And you and I are gathered here because we know we are called for such a time as this to help bring an end to the tragedy. And thankfully, as God's people, we don't have to come up with the answer of how to do it. Mark shared the strategy, but I'm gonna to turn to some divine strategy and it comes from the words of sacred scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 gives us the antidote. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If my people who are called by my name, that's you and me. God's telling us that we are the people who are called to this struggle for this moment. Not only are we bearing his name, we, we, but as Christians, that's a part of our identity. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Today, in the strategy meeting, we are praying together the litany of humility because we realize that none of us individually has all the answers. And even if collectively, if we got everybody's money, everybody's smarts, everybody's skills and experiences, and we brought them all here together, it's nothing compared to what the abortion industry has. They have the money, they have the courts, they have the politicians, they have the media, they have big technology, they have everything. But we know that we are a part of something with God Almighty and with Him, all things are possible. So we have to humble ourselves and say, I'm not the answer, He is. If my people who are called by my will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. God is telling us right there, I can't do it on my own, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With God, all things are possible. But then a couple of the parts of that verse that are a little bit challenging. 
Remember, the verse is directed not to the whole world. It's directed to God's people called by his name, right? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, it's easy for us to look at the abortion industry and say, that's wicked. The harm that's being done to women. Children are dying. But we have to look in the mirror and we have to repent for the sinful things that we have done. And we have to repent for the righteous things we have failed at times to do. Because God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins. Then I will heal their land. And how many of us want to see our land healed right about now? God's telling us what it's going to take. My entire time in the pro-life movement has been watching that verse played out in the lives of God's people. My first invitation into the pro-life movement was when Planned Parenthood opened the abortion facility over in Bryan College Station. My wife, who had been born and raised in a Catholic family, and they would go out and pray at abortion facilities. She said, David, it's coming to our town. We need to go. We need to get involved. I didn't want to go. There was a meeting being held at a local church, St. Mary's Catholic Center, the campus ministry at Texas A&M, and I didn't want to go, but you husbands know how convincing our wives can be. And so we went to the meeting, and it was organized by a young woman, a 21-year-old church secretary by the name of Lauren Gouldie. And Lauren had prayed. She had humbled herself. She had sought God's will, his face. And she said, we need to try to do something about this. And she spread the word to a few friends. It got out in the media. That meeting that night was packed with more than 450 people who came out from 60 churches throughout Aggie land. Because people came together and said, we need to do something about this. Now, they were asking volunteers, wanting people to get involved that night. My wife wanted to sit up front. I said, no way we are sitting in the back. I'm going to get out right as soon as the meeting's over. We ended up sitting near the front, as you can imagine. But the whole time I was wrestling with God, and I was saying, I, that person knows more than I do about this issue. That person has money. That person has political connections. What on earth can I do? But I got that sense that night that God had some role for me in this work. No different than what you are feeling tonight as you hear about what God is doing in the borderland region. And so my wife and I, we began to take baby steps and we began to humble ourselves. We began to pray. We began to go out to the site where that abortion center was opening. And regrettably, it did open. It did begin to spill the blood of innocent children. And we kept getting more and more involved. But then when a day came in 2001, I, had, I, I was really frustrated. And I was working. I was a drug dealer at the time. I was um, a pharmaceutical sales representative. It was, all, it was all legal, Mark, just to clarify. Okay. He's saying, who did I trust the microphone to now? A friend of mine called me, and it was that young church secretary who had started that local coalition for life that this organization came out of eventually. And Warren called and said, Planned Parenthood aborted 10 more children today. And that day was a normal day at that Planned Parenthood facility, but that was the day, June 26, 2001, I will never forget, because that was the day my heart broke. And I said, we're not doing everything we need to do. I said, maybe I'm supposed to just quit my job and, and do this as a full-time thing. And I've just, of course, taught. You know? And Warren says, well, why don't you do that? I went home and I told my wife, knowing she would talk to me about this, and she said, you know, David, to whom much is given, much is required. Ugh, I hate when she says that. <laughs> and two weeks later, we took a leap of faith and dove in, and I took the helm of that little organization, and Warren, the church secretary who started it, went to stay home and be a mom and still volunteered and was very involved. And over those next few years, as we saw that community begin to come together, we saw people praying, we saw people fasting, going out and sidewalk advocating. We saw people holding prayer vigils. We saw people working with our pregnancy centers, the crisis intervention that Mark talked about. And we saw abortions go down 2% the first year. Then the next year was 15%. The next year was 28%. We saw what God can do when his people humble themselves, pray, seek his face, turn from their wicked ways. But then we hit a wall. And the wall was the body of Christ was tired. People working hard, investing time and money and effort, and everybody was just angry. And the abortion numbers were still holding higher than we wanted them to be. We wanted them to be zero. And out of desperation, one day, I walked into our little pro-life office, and there were three other people there, a young married couple named Mary Lisa and Sean, a young woman named Emily. And we sat down at the wooden table in the center of that office, and we just said, we don't know what else to do. We've tried everything. And we decided to do 
something we should have done years earlier. We decided to pray and completely humble ourselves and say, God, we have no clue what to do next. Show us. And it was during that hour of prayer he gave us the vision of what became 40 Days for Life. We held that campaign two weeks later in Aggieland. A thousand people participated, and that was the year abortions fell 28%. We thought that was the end of the story. But then some people in Dallas called us, Karen Burnett and her crew. Then some people in Green Bay, Wisconsin, then Houston, Texas, then Kitsap County, Washington, then Charlotte, North Carolina, and all these other cities. It wasn't us. It was the Holy Spirit prompting God's people to pray, to seek his face, to turn from their wicked ways. And one by one, as these other cities did this, we saw God move in a power and realized he's up to something. We need to join him in what he's doing. And that was in 2007 when we launched the first national 40 Days for Life, thinking that maybe 15 or 20 cities would join together in this effort. And much to our shock, 89 cities in 33 states joined the first campaign, including El Paso, thanks to Gabby's leadership. And since that time, it has just continued to grow and grow and grow. Today, there have been 40 Days for Life campaigns as of 2020, conducted in more than 900 cities across 63 nations, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of volunteers participating and confirmed that we know of 17,990 lives saved from abortion, 107 abortion facilities that have closed their doors and gone out of business, and El Paso's just always trying to show off by closing down more and more and more. So that number, it was 106, the 107 was right here in your backyard. And 211 abortion workers have quit their jobs and left the abortion industry, including, of course, Abby Johnson, whose story was told so beautifully and unplanned. But all of these things came about because God's people humbled themselves and prayed and sought his face, turned from their wicked ways, and then God has been hearing those prayers. He has been forgiving our sin and he has been healing our land. And so if anything I can encourage you to do is press forward with the confidence of knowing that you are on the right path and realize that of all the hundreds of cities, I've traveled to more than 650 cities, all 50 American states and some 25 or 30 countries, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm, I, I'm saying this on a live stream, so they're going to hold me accountable to this. Of all the cities and all the leaders and all the organizations I have worked with, the single most effective and impactful local pro-life effort in America is what is happening right here, right now, in El Paso. <laughs> Bar none. And just up the pressure just a little bit, there's a lot of eyes watching, not just in America, in the world. This is the defining epicenter of the struggle for the soul of America and for the world. You are the reason for that. Many who have gone before, Gabby and Karen and so many others over many, many years, then the team of the Southwest Coalition for Life, the other pregnancy centers, the other ministries, the legislators, all those who have played a part in this, you are changing the very course of history. But I would obviously be remiss if I didn't recognize one person who was very instrumental in that. And I'm actually gonna call him back up to stage for a second because we wanna do something special for Mr. Mark Cavalier. So come on back up here for just a moment. When I first met Mark, he had been running the 40 Days for Life in Las Cruces. And I was so impressed by his leadership, his humility, his willingness to look to others and say, what can we do that's been done before? His entrepreneurial spirit, his innovation. He and I geek out over Star Wars and technology, so those are added benefits as well. I remember when he asked me to come in and speak at the inaugural banquet for this Coalition for Life, which wasn't even called it that at the time, and it was there in Las Cruces. Four years ago today, Giving Tuesday of that year. Who'd have thought? And at that banquet, I remember even saying, with Mark's leadership and with what you're doing, I think this Las Cruces abortion facility, it's a matter, it's, gonna, it's not a matter if it's going to close, it's a matter of when, it's going. How long after that did that place shut down? 30 days. 30 days later. <laughs> and many, many would have said, woof, my job's done. But instead, Mark, with the support of his amazing wife and family, said we have more to do because injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. 
And they committed to this community and to this region and forged relationships with so many other leaders and organizations. And what they have done is heroic. It's unprecedented. And so tonight we have a special presentation for Mark. And if you can bring that up, Eddie, I want to read what's actually on this plaque and then give you just a brief explanation. This is the Protector of Women and Children Award presented to Mark Cavalier, December 1st, 2020. And it says, for your selfless and tireless dedication to the unborn and their mothers. And it has Psalm 119, verse 73, your hands made me and formed me. And it's a beautiful statue. If you can turn that around, it's hard. I don't know if the cameras can pick that up. But it's hands and it's a baby lifting a hand to God. It's absolutely beautiful. This was a gift. It's not on behalf of an organization. There's no organization cited on there. It's on behalf of the entire El Paso pro-life community. And in fact, all the volunteers rallied together to raise the funds to do this, to present to you, to thank you. Because what you're doing is not only affecting all of us as pro-lifers, but it's affecting children who are going to grow up and change the world. It's affecting mothers who without this work would be carrying a lifetime of regrets. And Mark, there are fathers who are going to be able to go to their son's Little League games. They're going to be able to walk their daughters down the aisle. And there's a safety net that is growing in the El Paso and Borderland region because of you. This is presented, I'm just the one presenting it to you. This is from all of the volunteers and all of the people here in this room to say we love you and thank you for your heroic efforts. You're not allowed to say anything more. He'll be back. He'll be back. He didn't know that was coming, and I was blessed when they asked me to present that. So as we go into the time now to discern how we can make this work thrive in this moment, we need to recognize this, what we are about tonight in this room, what you're about on this live stream, is more important at this moment in time than ever before. We just went through a national election, and though there are still some things that are sorting themselves out, regardless, we know we're in an uphill battle when it comes to the political situation. We could gain a little bit of hope. We could look and say, well, we, we got some great Supreme Court justices. What about Amy Coney Barrett? That's an amazing, amazing blessing. And Mike Seibel and I were talking about there are some cases that could directly confront Roe. Some could potentially even overturn Roe versus Wade, but we can rest on our laurels because if and when Roe is overturned, not if, when Roe versus Wade is overturned, it does not end abortion. It throws it back to the states. And that's when our real work begins. And that's why it's more important than ever that we organize at the local level and we organize with the other organizations across New Mexico, across Texas. This work is more important than ever at this moment when our culture is more fragmented and more desperate in need for seeing light to pierce through the darkness. And also, realizing every time I've traveled outside of the United States, without exception, I've had people unsolicited come up to me and say something along the lines of, you know, we look to the United States for inspiration. We look at the pro-life movement in America as our example. I remember a journalist walking through the streets of London, England one night, and she said to me, David, we British are a very proud people, and we would never admit this publicly. We look to the United States and the pro-life movement for our inspiration and for our leadership, because what happens in America shapes the entire rest of the world. So if the entire world is looking to the United States at this moment, and the entire United States is right now looking and saying, what is going on in El Paso and in the borderland region, no pressure but you have to win here because what you are doing here is going to set a domino in motion that is going to literally help to bring an end to abortion across America. And one day when your children and grandchildren are reading the history books and the history books are talking about how this great injustice ended, they're going to read about this moment in time and the people in the borderland region who rose to the occasion and went all in. And they're gonna look at you and say, I am so proud of you, mom. I'm so proud of you, grandpa. 
Because when everybody else was busy doing their thing, they were all concerned about the pandemic and other things were going on. And yes, we need to be concerned, but you were doing the right thing at the moment in time when it was desperately needed. You can help change the course of history, but we are not done yet. We have not arrived at that moment. And the last thought is that this work is more important now than ever for that mother who just found out that she is pregnant and she's scared. And because of COVID, because of financial concerns, because of everything else, she is more at risk and that child is more at risk of abortion now than ever before. We need to make sure that we are there to help that mother. Two years into my time at the Coalition for Life in College Station, I had not seen or met a single child that had been saved through these efforts that I was a part of at that time. I had endured, we had been broke as an organization. I had been beaten up on the opinion page of our local newspaper, what a shock. And I remember one day, it was this time of year, it was right about now, and a local radio station was inviting people in the community to come and take gifts to the, the needy in our town, especially the needy with young children. And I thought, great, I gotta get away from pro-life stuff for a while. And I went to the radio station, I picked up some addresses and some boxes of gifts, and I started running them around. And the last house I got to was a trailer. And when I knocked on the door, the mother, the woman answered the door, and I had gifts for her and for her young child, and she invited me to come in for a moment. And when I came, she asked me, well, what do you do? I was like, I really don't want to go there. <laughs> but I said, well, I, I work with the local Coalition for Life and you know, help out there. And she said, really? She said, I've got a story to tell you. She said, several months back, I was driving into the Planned Parenthood Abortion Center parking lot, and there were some people praying outside. And when I pulled into the parking lot, one of the women reached out to me and said, do you need help? And she said, I ran over to her and said, yes, I need a lot of help. That's why I'm here. And the woman said, well, we're here to help you. And she said, well, what can you do? To and the woman said, I don't know. I'm a brand new volunteer. They just told me to give you this phone number. And she said, I called that phone number and some, a woman answered at your office. The woman talked to me and she immediately went to help. Everything I needed, medical care, housing, financial needs, everything. She said, because that woman answered that phone in that office, I chose life and my baby is in the next room. And she went in the next room and she came and brought him out and he was just beginning to pull up on people's legs and, you know, starting to try and up to walk. And this little boy at my leg was just grabbing onto my pants leg and I looked at him and I thought, how close was he to being a statistic? What if people hadn't been praying? What if somebody hadn't offered a phone number? What if somebody hadn't answered the phone? And what if there weren't people in a community to support that organization to make all of that possible? Right before Christmas, I got to meet that child and it was worth everything. And if you've not yet personally met a little girl or a little boy who's alive because of you, I hope you do one day very soon because you'll realize how important this work is now more than ever. So this brings us to the moment where we get to respond. And on the tables, for those who are here with us in person, there's a white envelope. And I'd ask whoever's nearest to it, just pick up the big white envelope and open it up, and inside there are two sets of cards. Don't worry, on the live stream, I've got special instructions for you. In that envelope, pull out the pink cards, pink envelopes, and hand those around as well as the pens to everybody at the table. Now, while you're handing that around, don't be filling anything out. I'm going to walk you through For everybody at home, you have two Number one is some of you received, I got it at my house in Virginia, you got a mailing with a special card. I had, it looks like this. I don't know if you can see that. But you got a card similar to the ones that we're working with. If for any reason you got that, just put it in front of you, fill this out as we go. Or the other option is right below the video you're watching right now, there's a button that says one-time gift. And when we walk through this, I'll tell you when to click that button. Okay? So the room, as you look at this, the only thing I want you to fill out right now well, let's see, down at the bottom. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I, let's just walk through the top first because it says the name on card and I'm gonna confuse anything here. So when you're thinking about what your investment in this work tonight is, Margaret put, my wife Margaret, Mark put out a challenge to us about a mortgage payment. Whatever, I don't know where you're at and I know this is a difficult time for some, 
But there are some numbers up and what those numbers could represent. Maybe for somebody tonight, it's a thousand dollar investment one time into this work. And maybe that's comparable to a rent payment. And that can sponsor a sidewalk intern to help up to 12 moms save babies. Divide a thousand by 12, I can't do math that easily in public, but you could figure out that's not very much to be able to literally save a life like we just heard in the video earlier this evening. Maybe it's $5,000 to sponsor the next 40 Days for Life campaign to mobilize hundreds of new people to action. Maybe it's $1,000 to staff a sonographer to provide free ultrasounds. There's various options. And even on the page where people are watching this, if you click one-time gift, sorry about the sound system, it says one-time gift. If you click that, it will open a new tab and it will have all these same scenarios. But no amount is too small. I want to make that very clear. Mark, is it also okay, even though the mic's acting up for me to say no amount is too large, is that all right to say we're good? Okay. So maybe it's 30,000, maybe it's 50,000, maybe it's 1,000, maybe it's 50. No amount is too small, no amount is too large. The one thing I ask you to do is not to do what I'm embarrassed I used to do coming to events like this. My wife and I would have that little conversation in the car. You know what I'm talking about. How much are we going to give tonight at the fundraiser? And we'd usually set on some number like 15 or $20 before we ever prayed, before we ever even heard the testimonies or heard the strategic plan. We were effectively putting God in our little bitty human-sized box. So if any of us tonight... Woo, that's God telling you to give generously. I'm just telling you. <laughs> He's telling me to be quiet. He wants to talk to your heart. What I finally realized is we need to be open to what God is putting on our hearts. And if any of us came in here tonight with a predetermined number as we pray, let's get a big mental eraser and let's wipe that off and say, God, you tell us what you want me to give. Because as for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord. Let's go to the Lord and pray over this decision. And then Mark will come up for the second and final decision. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity we have to come together in your name. You tell us we're two or more gather in your name, that you're present in our midst. And we gather physically here in this facility as well as virtually on the live stream in your name. We are your people. We are called by your name. And tonight we humble ourselves. We seek your face. We seek your will. And dear Lord, we turn from our wickedness. We repent of the sinful things we've done. We repent of the righteous things that we have previously failed to do. And tonight, dear Lord, help us to go all in with faith so that you can hear our prayer, forgive our sin, and heal our land. Dear God, help us to know the amount you would ask us to invest into this work and then to say yes. Yes, as for me and my house, we serve you, Lord. Dear God, we thank you for inviting us into this work. We thank you for all those who have gone before. We thank you for Mark and his leadership. We thank you for the staff. We thank you for all those who are here who came out even in a very difficult time. Thank you for inviting us into this work. And as we give and as this work closes more abortion centers and saves more lives, dear God, we promise not to take the credit for ourselves not even to credit the Southwest Coalition for Life, even though they've helped to coordinate so much of this, but instead we will give all the praise and all the glory to you and to your son, Savior, because it's in his name we pray. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, so on your card, you can check the box of the amount you'd like to give. If you're making out a check, you can make it to Southwest Coalition for Life. If you're filling out the card, following along online, it should have those same options. If you'd rather use a credit card, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm not doing myself. You can use your credit card information and put it there, the little three-digit security code. Make sure at the bottom to fill out their name, your billing address, city, state, phone, email, and make sure to turn that in. So I'll give you about a minute to do that. I'm going to have Mark come back up. Go ahead and finish filling that out. And for those watching online, if you didn't get that card, just go ahead and click the one-time gift button. If you haven't already, it'll open a new tab. You'll see all the same options. Just start filling in your information. It's super easy. We went through the process yesterday, easy as can be, and you can help them make your one-time gift here tonight. So give you about another 60 seconds, and then Mark will pick up from here. Okay, we'll try to figure this out. All right. <clears throat> Seems like standing over here helps a little bit for some reason. So um, 
Uh, by the way, whatever staff was involved with that, um, if it happens again, you're fired. <laughs> um, no, not really. Thank you, though. That really means a lot. Um, last year, Eddie did something similar, and I, I want to do this for you know the moms and those who've come before us, and also I, I'm very humbled that you all did such an amazing gesture, uh, and it's not. It's not unappreciated, so thank you. I did mention earlier, though, that I did have uh, like a bonus announcement, um, and this is the second opportunity uh, tonight. If you look, um, you know, we've been talking about unity, especially in these times, to, to not only help moms be heroes, but really to support each other in these challenging times, especially with a lot not only going on politically, but economically. Uh, I think it's important that we kind of also watch out for our own and, and kind of help one another. Especially a lot, I, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of good pro-life, Christian-owned small businesses really struggling right now. Um, and earlier this summer, we actually had a lot of our monthly members say, you know, they would actually like to have a list of local pro-life businesses so they know who to support. You know, they know where to take their money um, and, they, and, and uh, just a way to kind of to, to help one another. And so we're... We're, something that we're starting is pretty exciting, um, and we've actually got a couple of examples we've already jumped in. If you look in the event program on the back page, we've also actually had some of our sponsors who are offering some exclusive opportunities ex uh, just for our monthly members of the Southwest Coalition for Life. And I, I thought that was amazing. Um, Eight Signal Marketing is offering a special promotion, and Kate's Realty, and I, I just I thought that was so uh, generous of them to say, hey, we want to give back to the pro-life community uh, and all of those who are supporting you and making this possible. So I got to thinking, what if that was just part of being a coalition member? Like, what if you were really, in, in addition to helping moms, in addition to saving babies, um, that you actually had a network of of support? And so this is a pretty exciting way, I think, to, it's kind of a win-win-win. So if you are, for example, a pro-life business owner, it'll cost you nothing. We've got hundreds of members who would love nothing more than to give you their business, knowing that you are a pro-life business. All right, and if you are one of our members, right, then you would love to have that little extra opportunity, that little extra, you know, discount or whatever it might be. Uh, that they would offer you in exchange for that, okay? And then it also, of course, is a way to uh, to attract more members to support support this cause to help more moms and more babies. And it it doesn't cost anybody anything. And I was like, that's pretty amazing. So what we're going to do is next year in 2021, we're actually going to send out membership cards, um, and and it'll well, you'll have a private list. We'll keep it uh, we'll, of list businesses who have committed to say yes, we are helping out the pro-life movement. And, we, and, and that way you know where to go uh, to support local pro-life businesses. Um, and so, uh, so I'm really excited by that. In addition to that, um, if you consider that, and, and, and this is the most important opportunity I think of all, because imagine for a moment, man, try this side. Imagine for a moment that um, you, know, you worked and you only got your annual salary once a year, uh, but you didn't know exactly how much that was even going to be, and you had to budget for the entire year. That, that's actually how a lot of nonprofits operate. But the nonprofits that survive and thrive are because they have a strong monthly membership and they have a predictable, reliable support. And so our underwriters, by the way, who, who underwrote this entire event tonight, they paid for the entire thing, so it didn't cost our organization anything, and it means that every single penny that you give tonight goes directly to our mission. Okay, nothing goes, nothing's going to your chicken dinner. It's going directly to helping moms be heroes. And they actually were able to help so much so even more than our event that there was, that they said that they would be willing to match an additional $30,000. But they said that we want to make sure that the Storks bus, not only that you bought it and it's parked out in a driveway, but you actually are able to sustain it and operate it. So they made the offer to, to match your annualized amount of your monthly memberships made tonight or an increase on top of what you might already be giving. Okay, so what that means is if you make a monthly membership tonight of $100 a month, times that by 12, that's $1,200, and then double that, okay, you're going to have an impact of $2,400 for 2021. All right, so that is, uh, that's very generous and very, pretty, um, very amazing. And really, this is the most important thing because, again, it's this long-term commitment of our ongoing members that, um, uh, that, that, that are going to see us through to the long haul. Did I have, leave my remote over there?
That's, oh wait, 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 sorry guys. Okay, so um, so anyway, I'm inviting you tonight, if you're not already a monthly member, uh, to join for any amount uh, to be a member in this until we see this mission through to the end. Okay, this is this ongoing commitment, not just a one-time shot in the arm, which is super critical to make sure we can keep this going, but to make sure that we sustain it uh, even months and years down the road as long as it takes. And so um, I would invite you again to pray over this opportunity. Um, as we as we do this. Oh, I also want you to consider, let me see if I can get this caught up. Okay, so just consider now, now that we know these opportunities, if your monthly membership, if all your monthly membership did was mobilize hundreds of Christians, is would it be worth it? Okay, maybe. If your monthly... If your monthly membership also helped empower moms to be heroes and make that life decision, would it be worth it? That, that number that you have had with that. If your monthly membership helped to save even one baby's life from this violence of abortion, would it be worth it? And if your monthly membership helped us to close even one more abortion facility, would it be worth it? Okay. Hopefully you're saying absolutely to any one of those. And on top of it now, you're also having this bonus of being able to support your local pro-life businesses and have double the impact for 2021 through this generous offer of your, uh, of your, of your monthly membership. And so tonight I say that um, this is going to push us, this is going to make sure that we have maximum impact. So let us one more time, I think this is an important enough decision, we say one more brief prayer. And then we will have our final closing prayer as we, as we go out for the night. So let's do one last prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, just I thank you so much for our speakers tonight, for the inspiration and the guidance of David B. Wright, for Sister Dee Dee, for uh, especially those who have plowed the way for us, uh, and Gabby and Karen and so many other unsung heroes who have laid the foundation for what has now grown from that. We thank you for them. We thank you for this dinner. We thank you for baby Emilio, and we look to him and, and so many who have this opportunity because you have called us to be a part of this united effort to protect those who are vulnerable. Help us discern how our ongoing commitment, our monthly membership in this effort can make a difference. Help us understand how it will accomplish your will. Help us be faithful in saying yes to you and to finish the job that you have begun through this Coalition for Life. We ask this through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so that's what the other card is now. So you finished your pink cards, now you move to the blue cards. Did you notice they're pink and blue, by the way? Uh, okay, so your blue cards are for your monthly membership. You're going to go down and fill that out the exact same way. Our monthly memberships, you can see we actually name you after the nine choirs of angels because you are out there on the sidewalk with us just like uh, just like our guardian angels are. Um, and as you fill that, as you choose your out and you fill in your contact information, if you have a pro-life business or you're a decision maker in a business, there's a box on there you can check uh, if you are interested in being a part of that community network. And I'll call you and we can figure out those details. The last thing too, on top of everything else, is for our monthly members, I want you to take home one of those Christmas ornaments on your centerpiece tonight. And that image on that centerpiece, I want you to know who that is. That image on the centerpiece is baby Emilio, who you've already met, is the 3D ultrasound scan. <laughs> and so you can take that home. Oops, my remote bumped. So you can, you can take that home and put that on your Christmas tree and remember that our savior came through an unplanned pregnancy. And so, if you didn't, on, on your way out, by the way, um, make sure that you seal those up in your blue envelopes. Your table hosts are going to put all those back in your white packet. When you're done and those are all sealed up, we are going to have some staff available to pick those up from you. So, uh, so seal those up. Make sure somebody picks that up so that they don't get left behind. Um, and then for those of you watching at home, you're going to go through the same process to um, either on the card that you got in the mail or by clicking that ongoing membership button. We're nearing the end of our event. I'm going to call up a closing prayer. Uh, we have Pastor, Pastor Vince Torres, who came down from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, but on your way out, I also want to invite you, if you did not yet have a chance to see the Storks bus, it is parked over here to the right. And so we can, uh, you can, I want to make sure you get a chance to take a look at that. And that is it. So thank you all. And, um, and so Pastor Vince Torres is the executive director of the Family uh, Life Alliance in Santa Fe, which is uh, works with Focus on the Family.
who do amazing work in the state of New Mexico. It's an honor and a privilege that he made it down from our state capitol to be with us. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, Mark. All right, everybody calm down real quick. And let's enter into a spirit of prayer. But before we do that, Mark, thank you so much for the honor and privilege of being here today. It is truly an honor uh, to support this organization. And I would encourage each and every one of you uh, to support the work of this miraculous organization with your dollars right now. And uh, we're going to pray for God's blessing over this offering. Uh, many people struggle to ask for money. Mark doesn't because he's good at it. I don't because I'm a preacher and I'm always asking for money. So let's go to the Lord. Let's ask him to bless tonight's offering and gifts that are received. Father, Father, we do come before you tonight, and we thank you for this wonderful evening. We thank you for the speakers. We thank you for the amazing stories, Father, and we do, first and foremost, give you all the glory for the work that has been done through this great organization. Father, your word says that as your people, we are to stand firm and that we are to take action, and I thank you for the great work of this organization that not only stands firm in what they believe, but they take action, Father, to impact, to change, and to save lives. And so, Lord, I pray today that we, too, would be people of action. Father, we can't do everything by ourselves, but we can do something, and we can communicate today through our generous giving, through our sacrificial and joyful giving, that we affirm the sanctity of human life, that we value women and their unborn children. Father, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 that where our treasure is, that is where our heart is also. And so, Father, may we communicate again tonight through our giving that we value human life. Father, we thank you for being the creator of every life. We thank you that every life is sacred because it is created in your holy image. Father, we thank you for the gifts that are being received right now. Father, I pray that you would multiply them for the benefit of this organization and for your glory and your glory alone. We pray these things tonight in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful evening. That brings, that brings us to the end. Be safe going home. God bless you and thank you for being a part of this Rejoice event. Good night. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the event and just the encouraging words from many of our guest speakers and the stories you got to hear. Um, it was very exciting. It is full here at the banquet. So we are just uh, just so thrilled to um, have these many people come out here and support what, uh, what, what we are doing um, here in El Paso. So we just want to thank you guys for those of you still watching. Uh, I do want to introduce uh, Father Christopher. He has a few encouraging words that he'd like to share with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Father Christopher Adoncheso, just retired as Army Chaplain last past February. I'm highly motivated. I'm highly, I'm highly emotionally motivated to what I have seen this night. Lay people leading to protect life on earth. I want to thank all the organizers and all the people that have contributed to this evening's event. I want to encourage you to keep the good work we have started. God has chosen to make the lay people take care of life and teach the church how to protect life. I regret seriously on how we, the priests, abandoned our priestly ministry and joined the political forum to defend environment and defend the boundaries while we neglect the primacy of life on earth. I want to say that lay people, now that God has used you, we will be following you behind and do not relent until you find priests and bishops coming after you, coming, following you. Instead of us leading you, we now will follow, and it will come as you continue to pray and to, to, to do the good job God has called you into. I regret the fact that in the church, voices of the leaders, priests, bishops are divided Bishops and priests abandon what they should do in the life and the ministry we are called to by our vocations. And we have divided the opinions of the people, of the faithful. Some for, some against. And we 
have not let the people know the priority of our mission on earth. To save life is the most primary, and to save life temporarily and eternally for salvation is our goal. May God continue to bless all that have participated and will continue to foster this life event on earth until everything is fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Christopher. I will appreciate it for sharing those kind words. Thank Alrighty. you so much. God bless Thank you, you so much. Yes. yes. Alrighty. God bless you so much. And God bless you too. Yes. Thank All you. Alrighty. Alrighty, so we're just going to interview a few of the people that are, are out here um, and just were part of it. And so they just, we're just going to kind of ask a, a couple of quick questions, you know, and, and see what they, what they thought. Um, so um, we do have, we got a lot of people here. Uh, we have people that are young, people that are uh, a little bit older. So it's just exciting to just see the, the age range that we have uh, just supporting in a big group that we have out here so um can you just tell us a little bit what did you think about it uh how did you like it what was your favorite part and just anything you would like to share with uh, those watching virtually i like how they told of how they started the pro-life and how they were able to expand it and all of the heart touch the heart-touching um, stories and the things that all led to this. Awesome, thank you so much. Some of them are a little bit nervous, but we're gonna just go around a little bit over here so we can uh, talk with somebody else. So you guys can follow us. So, um. And then I, we're hoping to get a couple of words also from Jessica, the um, uh, uh, the one who's in charge of uh, many of the things happening at Southwest Coalition. Uh, wonderful uh, uh, person that I love to work with, and uh, it's just really exciting. So let's just hear a little bit from both of them as well. Jessica. Yeah, so we just want to hear a couple words um, from uh, one of our guests that was out here. So we're very excited to have you here. I hope you enjoyed the event. I did, yes. So I would like for you to share just a little bit with those that are watching virtually with something that you liked uh, um, that was very important to you, maybe something new, or just anything you'd like to share. Well, it was just a, such a thrill to be here. I say hi to everybody I know at home. People were texting me during the um, event, and that was awesome to know that there were people at home watching. Um, I thought the awards were beautiful, all three of them. I think that people need to be recognized. And it's just so beautiful to see all these people who, who, who want to cherish and protect the unborn because that's the most important thing. Thank you so much. You. Well, I'm Thank so you glad you came. Work. Yes, no, God bless you so much. God bless you. Alrighty. And then let me just try getting Jessica. I know she's been busy and then everyone wants to say hi to her. Um, she is a little bit famous, so. Hey Jessica, can I have you here if you work for us? Yeah. So here's my favorite person oh, ever. I love you, Rebecca. So that you can just share. I don't know anything that you would like to say to those watching. Uh, okay, so just really quickly, I'm not sure if you guys were able to finish hearing the rest of the story. Um, after I had my head cracked open, <laughs> Sister Dee Dee was so sweet that yelled out, who needs ditches? So she walked over to where I was and uh, she said, let me see your head. This morning I got into a little argument with the Holy Spirit and uh, apparently the Holy Spirit kept telling her that she was going to need her sutures that day. And she said, no, I never need them. Nothing ever exciting happens. And it turns out that, uh, that she actually needed them. So when she walked over to the cot where I was laying, she said, I've been waiting for you all day. Now, mind you, this was about 15 minutes uh, b before the entire evening of ended. So it was really nice to know that we were able to, to talk about pro-life. And I said, Sister Dee Dee, as she's so sewing my head, uh, this is not a mere coincidence. We're going um, to have to meet again, and I'm going to need to get you down to El Paso. So lo and behold, when we're watching the Republican convention, I see Sister Dee Dee on television, and I knew right there and then that she would be our keynote speaker. So I texted her, and I said, hey, Sister, this is Jessica from El Paso, the one you gave stitches to. We'd love to have you as our speaker. So that's exactly how we met, and I'm just so grateful that I cracked my head that day. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has a funny way of making things turn out, but at the end of the 
the day he's in charge and as long as we uh, were willing and accepting, it's, it's a pretty fun ride. So thank you all so much for coming. We are so grateful. The Southwest Coalition thanks you from the bottom of our hearts for being a part of this very important uh, mission to end abortion. We ask for your continued prayers and your support and we look forward to seeing you out there in 40 Days for Life. Thank you so much and God bless. Already, I don't know where. Um, it's just sort of people are getting ready to go. Um, so it's been a long day, that's for sure, for those of us working out here. Um, so we're just excited uh, to have the day, you know, finish. It was successful. Uh, we were very blessed and touched. So uh, I hope you guys as well enjoyed it. Have a good night and uh, just pray blessings over you. And I hope that you, we would see you out there, as Jessica said, for 40 Days for Life. So thank you so much.